Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, law nerds. We are on day three of the Gwyneth Paltrow ski crash case. We are resuming afternoon coverage with the court resuming in just a few minutes. When court comes back, excuse me, I just ate lunch at rapid speed. When court comes back, we will get a few things that the attorneys needed to put on the record for about 15 minutes before the jury comes back into court. And then the jury will be back and we will resume the cross-examination of the plaintiff's daughter. For those of you just checking in about this case or don't know about this case, here's kind of a brief road so far. Sanderson, the plaintiff, is suing Gwyneth Paltrow, the defendant, and she is cross-claiming or counter-suing him. Both of the lawsuits are for negligence. These are civil suits. There is a plaintiff and a defendant and then a cross-plaintiff cross defendant in Utah. If you are 50, 50, both liable, then nobody wins. You have to be less than 50% responsible. The jury needs to come back with three fourths of the jury agreeing. This is a negligence action. It is for monetary damages and attorney's fees, not punitive damages. With all of that, again, plaintiff and defense, not a prosecutor. The rules of the road are a little bit different. We're dealing with depositions and things like that in a civil case, but the question is negligence. Was there a duty and was the duty breached and did that breach cause damage? The duty here is to a downhill skier. This case is very analogous to a car crash. So who's at fault for the accident is the big question the jury has to decide. Then at what portion they're at fault? So the jury will have to decide who is at fault? What percentage are they at fault? Are there any damages? And then do they recover those damages? That's where we're at. We will see what happens. I know you have lots of questions. I will continue answering questions throughout the day. And then that should be the end of the day. I suspect that the plaintiff will testify today. That's what we were told yesterday at the end of court. So we will see if the plaintiff takes the stand. But they gave like a list of four witnesses before the plaintiff, and we've only gotten through one and a half. So Will, this has been running a little slow. I think it's possible the plaintiff and Paltrow testify tomorrow. I'm optimistic either way. So with that, let's get into the intro and get back to court. They're not back on the record yet, but should be soon. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. Of course, as I say that, we come back and they are on the record. I'm turning up our volume and let's see what okay. issues they need Counsel, to put on the record. approach just for a second? Don't approach. I'm going to speed this up real quick so we can catch up to real time um, because I did pause this. Once we catch up to real time, since we can't see anything while they approach, I will be answering questions stream. It's so good to see you, law nerds. Um, and I'll try to get to as many as I can from everyone. Just a reminder, if you want to stay in the loop, Law Nerd Alert will get you there. Those are our free email lists. Right, we can go on now. Easier for me than the text crew. Okay, let the record reflect that uh, counsel are present. And so many international. I think Mr. Owens wanted to nerds. address the topics of uh, the, the cross examination that needed to be cleared with the court first. I am going to slow this back down. Owen wants to address the character questions. Those per the motions in limine do need to be run by the court before they bring that to court. So I'm at 1.25 speed, so we catch up. There will be some breaks where we can catch up. Of the court's order, which I have right in front of me, memorandum decision on motions in limine. I have it too. 2023, specifically pages three and four about, um, I was on TV in the UK this credibility. morning. To remind us all, it says, on this topic, the court rules that oh, because gosh, of the admissibility of character evidence, which may be probative of truthfulness or untruthfulness, uh -huh. can be fraught with evidentiary issues well, and examination that up. potentially falls under Rule 608 should first be addressed with and sanctioned by the court outside the presence, secured outside yes, the presence of, of the, the jury. jury. Okay, you with me on all that? Yes. I'm sure you are. The judge wrote it, sir. There was testimony by Dr. Goldstein yesterday that the patient is not de-stimulating, de uh, 
or there was no destimulation. I think it's spelled maybe D-I-S, meaning the patient is not creating or enhancing symptomology for gain. Okay. There was also conversations that Mr. Sanderson had a good relationship with his daughters. Okay. There are various facts, some of which were already addressed, and I, I'm trying to avoid repeated bench uh, conferences during the trial. Well, we appreciate uh, that. During, especially this next witness. <clears throat> and I want to be careful and comply with the court's orders. All right, so there are a hundred facts. This Your is Honor, the appropriate way go to, to this do this. Issue of Wait, whether he is enhanced. Literally a hundred or like, your honor, there's a hundred facts. Like, are, is this a literal hundred facts? Also, this is the appropriate way to do it when we're dealing with character evidence. You don't just let the shit out of the horse and then apologize. You go to the court first and say, this is what I want to elicit. This is the proper procedure to do this. And I appreciate the mindfulness of counsel, even though a lot of what he does rubs me the wrong way. This is absolutely the appropriate way to do this. Dancing is symptomology for gain. Plaintiff's daughter, his own daughter, Jenny, says essentially his character is such that he will be dishonest and lie for gain. It's, it's not quite those words, but it's essentially those words. Well, if it's not quite those words, what are the exact famous, words? Essentially, he will lie. Call I'm that putting witness. putting it out there. Call that witness. To do with the cross examination that's about to occur. Yeah, because I want to ask her if that's a true statement. And and what uh, what did she testify to on direct examination that that's in response to? Bing bing. You know, I didn't personally Nothing. take those depositions. Nothing. No. What did this yes. witness testify Nothing. to here in open court? I know would, the answer, Your Honor. Would, I guess. Uh, what is nothing relevance we to that to that cross examination? Ooh, ooh. I've only had five minutes and we haven't hit those questions yet. No, 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 no. I, that's I not. That, but. That's not the question. Wonder, what I envision doing is no, saying, no, 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 um, no. Is this a true statement? No. And from her like sister. From her sister. And what did she say on direct that, that what? opened that up? I guess is what I'm saying. This is the third time the judge is asking this question more patiently than most judges I've seen. A lot of judges would be like, "Not my question, not the answer." This judge is very patient. Yes. Like, for example, I did just, tweet. Let me, my... explain, let me explain my thinking. So thank you. The questions that how, you've already asked. How I mean, did... she, she, this witness painted a fairly broad picture. How is of this appropriate? Um, personality, uh, his his issue. You know, the lawyers argue with the judge all the time. Issues both before and after. He's just not answering it. The, the accident. And so I think it's fair game for cross examination to address those topics. So thank you. Like, think, like you were. I think I better understand your question. So in other words, you, you said. Uh, you said, well, isn't it, or are you aware that your sister uh, felt differently yeah. about this issue or that issue? And are you aware that your sister felt as though she was and we heard that treated testimony. this way by her father? I think those are fair areas of cross-examination. And we heard that this Because of the fact that she offered testimony on those topics. So I guess, so my next question, and as long as it doesn't, as, as the uh, motion in limine order indicates, as long as it doesn't, I guess, tip the tip the scale on 403 where, where its probative value starts decreasing because you've covered the same area over and over again or it's incredibly inflammatory and would be too prejudicial to to read or to ask that question in front of the jury yep all right so i can i address that this is within the scope of cross-examination how yes thank you i think that's sort of what you're asking how um that's Your what Honor, he's asking all day yesterday were these neural radiologists and neural psychologists talking about every single aspect of um, Mr. He's talking about this uh, witness. Um, Sir? For instance. Sir, this? Well, this issue, I mean, literally an opinion by Goldstein that he's not faking for gain. All right, so um, I think it would be very unfair to my client to not address that issue with every single witness now that comes up. I mean, it's, it's their plaintiff's position that he is not faking for gain. It's the defendant's position he is faking for gain. So uh, I don't think I should be limited for her to just hit 20 points when I have... Uh, um, the rules of evidence limit you inherently. ...case to defend for my client. Literally lawyering. On every aspect of his brain. Darlene, is that her name? Carlene. Thank you. Said... This accident took the, the joy of life out of him. She did. 
Goldstein, essentially the testimony is this utterly changed his life. And yes. I think it would be wrong for us, be unfair to my client and, and just general. Bring that witness. The system of justice for me to be restricted tightly to, uh, okay, only, <clears throat> I can only ask her <clears throat> about how, how he couldn't tie a knot. I mean, I need to be way <laughs> broader than that when we're dealing with it. Oh, fuck. A, a claimed severe permanent brain injury that's taken the joy of his life out. Okay. Thank you. I think I understand the argument. Let me it hear from the plaintiff. It has to be responsive to direct. Mr. Sykes, what's your position on this line of questioning as it was just outlined? What do you mean? What? Oh, my God. <clears throat> you have to ask questions within the scope my of the direct is that examination. That's why we have the rules of evidence, and that's why we had motions in limine to you know, troubleshoot these types of issues and get preliminary rulings. And here we uh, are. Or, you know, the, uh, I mean, you can't just attack someone's character for the sake of it because your client, his client's worried about the ca how the case is going for him. That doesn't give him a right to attack someone's character based upon someone who's not going to testify, maybe read the deposition, who has incredible mental health problems. And it's just not, it's not right to let him go beyond the scope. He can put his own case on when he wants to. Yep. You know, but asking a witness, I mean, uh, she's, I think, we caught up. <laughs> we caught up to real time. Forty-five. Forty-nine. He's been out of the house nearly thirty years. You know, and uh, to try to ask force her to ask questions about whether or not her sister who hasn't testified is truthful uh, runs an incredible risk of uh, prejudicing the jury for someone who's not going to testify and so uh, that they believe he's not going to testify I'd like to just you know, when in doubt, go to the rules. And hold on, I got them too. <coughs> Excuse me. Where are my rules? Hold on. Uh, Which one are we going to? I've reputation got all my or opinion evidence. A witness's credibility oh, okay, eight or two. may be attacked or supported by testimony about the witness's reputation for having a character for oh, wait, truthfulness no, we're going to or credibility. untruthfulness. Hold on. That hasn't come in. Uh, and the fact that a daughter that he didn't get along with thinks he might lie isn't reputation evidence uh, or by testimony in the form of an opinion We're about that character uh, uh, the evidence of truthful character is admissible only after the witness's character for truthfulness has been attacked it hasn't been and attacked. he wants to attack it <coughs> um, he wants B, to attack it specific instances of conduct except for a criminal conviction uh, under Rule 609, extrinsic evidence is not admissible to prove instances of a witness's conduct in order to attack or prior support bad acts. Right. the witness's character for truthfulness. Okay? Not admissible. Uh, but the court may, on cross-examination, allow them to be inquire, inquired into if they are probative of the character for truthfulness or untruthfulness of on 405, the witness 405B. or another witness whose character uh, the witness being cross-examined has testified about, uh, and so. Isn't that essentially what he's where he's pegging it? That's what I he's don't arguing. Think so. This witness hasn't even testified. We're talking about Terry Sanders. Hasn't We're testified. Talking about Jenny. I know. <laughs> uh, you know. So the topics of this her, judge is so patient. The, the, it, I mean, the topics of her direct examination will will uh, create the mm -hmm. contours of what the cross-examination might be. Except for a criminal conviction under 609, extrinsic evidence is not admissible to prove specific instances of a witness's conduct in order to attack or support the witness's character for truthfulness. Okay? Is, is so there period. something, Mr. Bueller, that... Oh, just, uh, the witness is Polly. Wait, how, sorry. Thank how you. many people are but, arguing I mean, they're, this? They're trying to attack Terry with specific instances. Can't be done. And... Beyond that, Your Honor, I think it's just unfair to choose up time. We're going to be late now in a minute or two. Unfair uh, is he part can put of his the case consideration on. here. If he lays a proper foundation, he can perhaps read Jenny's deposition for what, it, what, for what it takes. You know, 
They served her with an illegal subpoena. Oh, uh oh. In Idaho. And she thought it came from us. Oh. Now, I don't know if there was misrepresentation we've already, or not. We've already addressed this yeah. issue. But I mean, but I mean, that's well, how. You don't need to rehash it. Okay. Right. Yeah, please rehash but, but it. We want to hear that, it. That, uh, <laughs> she's not going to testify. They have a deposition. And the court rules provide that they can read that under some circumstances. I want to know. So, uh, you know, let them do that, but why harass this witness trying to get her to indirectly condemn her father and her sister by either agreeing or disagreeing with something that she didn't witness? It's just, it just makes no sense. They so can cross examine the father about it too. Deny his request. Okay, thank, thank you. Now, <clears throat> there's a attorney smarter than I am here, Kristen Van Orman. I'd like her to address it too. Good. Oh, well, gosh. I think I'm just going to hear one, from one lawyer. Yeah, on one the, lawyer. The Anything and else, Mr. Owens? Final statement. Thanks. You, you know, um, plaintiffs did ask about personality Are we just traits sitting down? on direct, and, and that his personality has changed. Um, and did, did, that's was fair. Was there any direct examination about that truthfulness, though? No. And honesty. There was not. I don't. Re I don't have notes of that. No, there was not. No, there was not. Okay. So I can see you so get. I can see you questioning along the same lines as of what you just did. I think that's fair. And I did adjust my questioning to the court's concern. But like, but getting involved in, um, you know, an underlying motivation for the for the lawsuit and for pursuing the lawsuit. I didn't hear any direct direct to, examination on that topic. There certainly was yesterday. And then ask I those questions yesterday. Witness. And you could you could certainly cross examine or call those other witnesses and and address that with them. But Jesus. with this witness, I think the 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 cross is limited to the scope. Correct. At least in the plaintiff's case. I mean, you can recall her in your case later, and they, and that may change what you can ask. But at least right now, the plaintiff is entitled to put their case on. So we do chat knows the rules of evidence better than this attorney right now. Subpoena. For Thank you, one, chat, for being so wise. Subpoena for all. Right. So one of the questions I will ask at the end of this witness's testimony today is, is this test, is this Recall witness the witness now then, sir. Would she, would she prefer that? Um, frankly, I'm thinking of the witness. I know, but right now the objection is beyond the scope. Okay, so do, does everyone agree that I can re, <laughs> that this witness will be, made, will be available next week? And but will be recalled. She's subpoenaed. I can remind her of that fact that when she finishes her testimony. She's, She's not released. Okay. Is she subpoenaed, Mr. Sykes? Uh, we didn't subpoena her. Are we uh, give her one while she leaves the courtroom. Find it right we, here. We emailed uh, the plaintiff's lawyer. Uh, we intend to call the three wit the three daughters. Will you accept service? And I remember the answer being, but I could be corrected. We will. Accept service for these two daughters and not for this third. Huh. I don't uh, now, I like to see that, Judge. I don't, I mean, there's uh, oh, four shit. of us working on this. I don't have a I, recollection of that. I, I'm not calling my good friend Mr. Owens a liar. No, because <laughs> I, I, remember that. I, I it's one step away from my learned friend. <laughs> okay. Find the email. So, by the way, if you can't tell, I'm not speaking. I didn't expect this issue to arise, so uh, I do recall. Oh, y'all! We'll get there. We'll get there. I promise. I promise. I'll, I'll was summarize. The one who Ooh, emailed. I'm loving the stripy suit with the blue tie. We are tie. not representing Jenny. Uh, you have to subpoena her directly, and this may take a minute, Your Honor. Search the emails. I like the light blue tie. Personality traits. I mean, these broad criticisms by their expert based on the fact witnesses Cross without being able to talk to the fact their witnesses their about the basis for it. expert, not the I, daughter. I do Why is that hard? In this manner. Have you well, never trialed? That, um, we need to call the jury in. You can, be, you can do your cross-examination, but if they're, uh, as to the objection, limiting it to the scope of the direct, that would be sustained. Okay. And we can uh, you can call the witness she, later the witness will agree to appear next week that's not what they I said that's not will, what they said at all she does is that 
Is that uh, something that you can rely on? How do we get subpoena for one and subpoena for all? What does that mean? That's the court's order. That To me, that it mean, means... It, it means if, if a witness has been subpoenaed, then they remain on that subpoena yep. until the court releases that subpoena. Yep. If the witness hasn't been subpoenaed, then they simply haven't been subpoenaed. And then and you're I have screwed. No control over that. Lawrence, will you agree <laughs> that you accepted uh, service of the subpoena Show them for the email. these two daughters? Show them the email. True. <laughs> Do you have a copy of the subpoena? Those, the three daughters are here in Washington State. Spicy. Do you have a copy of the subpoena? Give it to her now. Yep. It's pretty simple. It is pretty simple. Yes, Your Honor, those are facts. It is pretty simple. This is what happened today. Pl Have the plaintiff has the plaintiff subpoenaed Polly? <laughs> no. I don't believe so. They didn't. So I can't rely on a, an email from Bob Sykes saying, we are intending no. to call Polly and Shay. They said intending to call, they didn't say subpoena. It's not subpoena. This That's is an different. email January 24, 2023. That's different. Intending. Then, uh, in response to a question, will you accept service of Paltrow their won't come in until the jury comes in. I mean, she doesn't want to be response? on video while on, um, well, at council table. And this is the only way to avoid it while they're doing this is for her to not I'm be waiting. in the courtroom. They, they've got the email. <laughs> we are intending to call Polly and Shay. They're not subpoenaed, though. So get a subpoena and give it to That's her before it. she leaves. Okay. Do you not have so them in your bag? Like the is there something on the you can certainly ask criminal her lawyers do? Is. Yeah. If, I mean, they say they don't think so. Now that's not a no. That's more technical than I usually get with plaintiff's counsel. Clearly. I mean, we're calling her and subpoena one for one is subpoena for all. So but if she's not subpoenaed, it doesn't matter. Sure. So what happened if you're just coming in? Hi, chat. You're the best. If you're just coming in, here's what's happening. They, Paltrow's attorney wants to ask a bunch of character questions about the father because it's become clear that the daughter they intended to call is refusing to show up in court. So they want to be able to ask all of those questions of the daughter that is present in court and they can't do that. So when the court was like, no, you can't do that. He went like this. <laughs> And then was like, what the fuck am I going to do? A subpoena for one is for all means that if plaintiff's lawyers subpoenaed this daughter, she can be compelled to come back and testify next week for the defense. What they are saying is, well, we didn't subpoena her. She has willingly showed up. So you are going to either have to subpoena her or ask her if she's willing to show back up. She has the option to say no. So this is an absolute mess. This, <laughs> this defense attorney is like, that's normally more technical than I get. You need to know if they're subpoenaed or not, my guy. The, uh, both sides have been, have been snarky with each other. So I think defense counsel is caught off guard that he's being held to the rules. And he's like, what do you mean I can't just ask what I want? And the court's like, look, here was the legal disagreement. You can't cross-examine people about everything in the fucking world. It has to relate to what they were asked about on direct examination. Otherwise, opening the door wouldn't fucking matter. You could just ask people whatever. It has to relate to direct examination. This attorney, Owens, was like, well, I should be able to ask because these witnesses yesterday said X, Y, Z. You have to cross-examine those witnesses about those questions. You can't ask some other witness outside the scope of their direct examination. The plaintiff's lawyers are entirely correct on this. And while I empathize with our learned friend, Mr. Owens here, this is something he should have anticipated. This is not a shock. This happens all the time and you should have subpoenas literally in your bag ready to fill out. I, I don't know why this is such a problem. What is going on? <laughs> why is this an issue? Why are we going back to like the most basic fucking rules of evidence that your cross-examination, what, is that the third day of law school? Good God, the, the, the lawyer has to stay within the scope of direct. You don't just get into character evidence because you kind of want to. Jenny from, Jenny GA said, Emily, you should be a judge. No, I should not. I would be, I would not be a great judge. 
Um, because a, my face is not patient with people. So if somebody was making an argument like Owens, this judge asked his question three times at least and explained, that's not what I'm saying. My eye would start twitching and I'd be like, counsel, your cross cannot go outside the scope of direct. And what? I couldn't, I could never, I could, I would start getting red and I would want to yell at people. Nope. I do this way better. This is much more fun for me. I don't have the bandwidth to be as patient as this judge. This judge has been very patient. My judicial temperament scores might be a little low because my face, because my face gives me away. I know the rules of evidence well, but I like being a commentator. I very much liked being an advocate as well. I could be a TV judge. I would do that. I would judge Judy judge. I could not, I could not this kind of judge. <laughs> I could, I could TV judge. I could. I'm ready for like influencer court. I'm here for like settling influencer beefs on television. Um, so we're just, we're just. Um, Isabella said, didn't get YouTube alert and only welcome email from Law Nerd Alert. Check your spam on Law Nerd Alert if you got the welcome email and just ready search by jury? at Emily D. Baker and you okay. should find it. Emily D. At Emily D. Baker com, you should find it. Make sure that you go ahead and star it so it doesn't get sent to spam, especially with Gmail. Um, if you don't open, if you open one and then don't open the other one, sometimes they just put those in the wrong tab and you'll find it there. Christina K said, as a therapist, thank you for the work that you do as a therapist, bringing up Jenny's mental health when she isn't there is killing me. Can we not add to the stigma? Um, I wish we could not add to the stigma, but in court, these things become highly relevant. The way things operate in court and the way things operate in polite society are two very, very different things. Oh, she stood for the jury today. That's lovely are two very different things. So, Fred, what are, you can't walk on my keyboard. So the things that happen in court, and I think we're going to see more leaning into the defendant's age that's going to feel um, difficult for a lot of y'all too. What happens in court and what happens in the real world are two very different things. So it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, so, Fred, Fred, he was heading back to that computer. Why does this seem so disorganized and disjointed? Is this normal or just crap lawyers? I don't think the lawyers are crap. It is a bit disjointed, more disjointed than some civil cases I've seen. I don't know why, but we saw a very tightly orchestrated trial with Depp v. Heard better than most. This is more common. Like this is more the norm for a trial. It's frustrating after we've watched some very well orchestrated trials. Um, Depp v. Heard was very well orchestrated, even when the even when the attorneys could be frustrating. It was a well run civil trial, and I think everyone who watched that is like their first live trial Thank experience. Thank you. Let the record this reflect is, the jury's back in the room and parties this and counsel. This is present. much more common, and we've been spoiled. I need to apologize. I was being an ass earlier. You you are. Uh... It was wrong for me to triangulate you, your dad, and your sister, and your mom. Um, what is happening? And I ask for your forgiveness. Uh, you love your dad, fair? True. What you love just your mom. happened? True. You what? love your sister, both sisters? Did somebody tell him he was being a dick? I'm so surprised. Your dad was a texter. Is that true? He was a he texter. Was pre, he was a goer. He was a doer. He was yes. a poster. He and was everything but a pusher. A poster, like Facebook. Yeah, he's always been very tech savvy. Can we ask about? Just ask about the GoPro and let it go. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to address. Uh, Today is so confusing. Defense exhibit one eleven. I'm on a roller coaster that H2. I did not sign up for. I think you have your binder. Oh gosh. Objection. Objection. Okay. Defense exhibit one. What is it? One. I one like 11, this judge. I feel like the judge two. is. 111, page fair. two is received. <laughs> and could you. I don't think uh, I can do can anything you, without uh, the soundboard these days. And Peter, could you know. That yeah, we, judge, that just goes to that page, not the whole exhibit. True. Page two. Nicholas, page that's one. fair. All right. And oh, yes, we do have it a is. defense binder. Now it's not going to be in there unless you. Yeah, mark. Terry's testimony is going to be very interesting. Uh, witness binder. 
And while we're doing that, could you step down and take a look at this? And James, could you bring this up big? I hope this is the email about the GoPro. So that we can actually read. Please and thank uh, you. The bottom of this. Do you recognize this by chance? It looks vaguely familiar. Her smile stands out to me. So do you recall that your dad, after being brought down on the toboggan, texted out a picture of uh, the toboggan person? Does this ring any bells? Yes. I think it's. I think it's likely. I think he was grateful for her service. Okay, you nodded yes, but I, yeah. to get it audibly. Yeah. She said, "I think it's likely." All right, so I'm going to read this. Whitney kept me entertained while Stephen probing P, no me one's, with questions no to evaluate my senses. No one's winning yet. We're in the plaintiff's case. And horse lover from so. Michigan. She also took me down in the toboggan by herself, and won the DV. Deer Valley, I assume, women's downhill race contest, a sweetheart, exclamation point. Okay, you can, you can sit down, that's okay. And can we go back down? I have snacks this afternoon because I needed. And I'm just gonna hand you this, may I approach yes. if, if you wanna read it again, you can. Okay. I think Judge Newman might be one of my favorites So as well. do you recall uh, seeing this, we also the Brooks trial was really well executed, like except said, for Brooks it being seems Brooks. Familiar, like her. The her prosecution smile did a great job. Maybe something I've seen before. Um, this was seven years ago. And uh, what's included down below sounds like my dad's eternal optimism and positivity. Yeah. Pretty op uh, pretty articulate. Would you say just uh, within an hour of his accident? He's an articulate human. This is an interesting and, line of questioning. Uh, quite praising, and the, the toboggan person is smiley, right? This is going to minimize yeah, the injuries. Yeah, he was grateful. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Vicky. Defense 102. Vicky, don't say that. This is supposed to be eight days. This is supposed to be an eight-day trial. Don't say that. So in that binder, uh, they're individually numbered. May I approach? You may. I'll help you. So you look at these little stickers, and that's how you get the number. All right, and let's do the bottom. We are not moving to Salt Lake City. We are taking like a stopover. Okay. We're and on like a layover. You can look at a, we don't live here wish, now. We're not moving, and I promise. The one right in front of you. I cannot. All right. But Which one I are am you invested. There, Polly, it looks like P. I won't put this on the record so that. Uh, is that your email, though? That is my email. All right, and is that your sisters, Jenny and Shay's emails? Correct. All right, do you recall getting this email on the evening of the in incident? I do. Ooh, the and, unfamous uh, email. It's genuine, it's real. Your dad created this. Internet, don't email them. I believe so. And uh, I th think- uh, Nora, I'm here for it. You help me. Did you get a call from your dad on this day about the incident? There is a time limit. Before I don't know what this it is. email, if if the incident was about right before lunch, and this is 8 p.m. on February 26, 2016, remind me, did you get a call before then, or was this your first notice? I don't recall precisely. In my memory, I think I received a phone call first, and then received an email from your. Oh yes, you testified, and you weren't sure whether it was uh, from your dad or from Shay. It, okay, Carly. gotcha. All right, so um, your dad said, "Here's what happened from my friend and eyewitness," and then something's attached. Uh, do you believe you clicked on this? I'm sure I did. Okay, and do you recall what it was? Um, there's been a lot of speculation trying to figure out what that was. Um, the fact Do that you it's know? a 
meetup link, it tells me probably something from, so the day that he was skiing, he had gone with a meetup group. Let me interrupt, because all I'm asking is, do you recall what it was? She does not. On this? I do not recall precisely. Okay. And he I said. I think I wasn't able to access information. Why? Well, that's a different comment. That's, yes, it is. Uh, you, you think you clicked on it and nothing came up? Correct. That's what I think. Did you say that in your deposition anywhere? I don't believe I was. Uh, improper use of a deposition. Uh, Overruled. We asked you about 100 questions about this email. Do you remember? Oh, jeez. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> I, I've been asked about this email a lot. Right. I, I don't recall what, what it was. It almost felt like in my memory, potentially a dead end. So listen to my question, though. Yes. We asked you 100 questions about this in your email, in right. your deposition. Count you them. were under oath. Correct? Count yes. them. You understood that? Count yes. them. And the court reporter was taking down every word. He's allowed yes. to interrupt and its cross-examination. And then cross you had an to review your transcript for accuracy. I wasn't aware that I could, but yes, I did review it. And, and did you make a correction? Like, actually, I tried to click on it, and nothing came up. Did you ever do that? It's just a vague recollection. No, I do not believe. Yeah. So, okay, you're, the opportunity to make a correction. Uh, We've if, got to sweater. What you said in your deposition. The reason is, the reason we take depositions, you understand, is oh, so years gosh. later people don't so come up with new memories. Condescending. Do you understand that? Sure. Okay. You can I do say not that. recall what this link was. In a not condescending way. Thank you. Because okay, let's go to the top points half. his cross. But they might be lost with his demeanor. Do you recall responding to this link in any way? I don't believe I responded to the email. She's been asked Things questions about this a hundred times. On the bottom half. Yes, they Your should have redacted out the emails, but they I'm didn't. I'm famous. Uh, do you know why he said that? I think it matches his personality a little bit she of making he was being light sarcastic. of a serious situation. Yeah, that's all what right. we all thought. Uh, in his deposition, but it could he be said, sarcastic. I thought it was cool that I had had a collision with a celebrity. Uh, do you have any what? reason to dispute that? Uh, I object. There's, this is improper use of the deposition again. Over, overruled. Go ahead. I have he not said, read his deposition. I have, uh, my question was, do you have any reason to dispute your dad's statement that he thought it was cool that he had had an accident with a celebrity. Your Honor, I, I think if she's going to do this, she should show him the deposition because there's more to it than that. Yeah, it's hard out of context. Yeah, just so <laughs> when there's when there's an the, objection, the, I need to. The move objection on. was overruled. Gosh, this, there was a second objection. The, this this was just. Do you, do you have any reason to I, dispute? I need to rule that? on the second objection, <laughs> right. which, so, which is overruled. Go ahead. Thank counsel, you so let sorry. the judge judge. This is not All Judge right, Owen's show. Reason, to dispute your dad's statement that he thought it was cool and that he'd been in show. an accident with a celebrity. I do not think it was cool. I cannot dispute whether or not my father thought it was cool. Perfect. Okay. Now, nowhere on this does it say I'm hurt. That's correct. Correct. And. Uh, this link is answers. important, would you agree, to know what was going on within hours of the accident? If you ever testify, yes. simple and answers. We've asked for this link. Do you know where it is? I do not. It's right there in the or email. what was posted? Do you, have you That's ever seen say. it? It's right there in the email. You have the link. The link's right there. I, I can't answer yes or no. I'm sure I, I clicked the link. That would have been Maybe you should subpoena the logical meetup. thing. And do you remember what it was? No. She okay. said that twice. Now we can go to the top half. Maybe you should have subpoenaed Meetup. Your sister Shay has responded. This was her genuine response. Uh, do you see it's about an hour and a half later, 932 on the date of the event? Do you see that? Yes. All right. Dad, I can't. Here we go. I cannot the, believe how this, unlucky and how crazy this all is. I also can't believe this is all on GoPro. What are, what the, are chances? the chances? I'm so glad you're okay. How are you feeling this evening? All right. Uh, 
I cannot believe how unlucky and how un and how crazy this all is. Do you remember receiving Shay's reply? Yes. And actually, as I look at that, that, that was not a tri trick question, but I, I can see you are actually not on this reply. Do you see uh, your, your name isn't copied to all? I, I, maybe I've read that somewhere then because it yeah. looks familiar to you were me. Probably and I just showed it realized in the deposition. it just now. Okay. Um, by the way, your sister just weeks earlier had injured herself skiing. Is that true? Correct. Like three weeks earlier, she blew out her knee. Tore an ACL and an MCL. Those Ouch. are knee issues, right? Correct. All right. Those are knee issues. What are the chances? Is that referencing that? Like the fact they had both gotten into ski collisions or do you know? I take it that way. Okay. I think it was like, it's February, we're both hurt. We're both unlucky? Possibly. Okay. I'm so glad you're okay. All right, Shay hasn't testified yet, uh, but was it your understanding that on the evening of the accident, your dad was okay? I think she meant that, you know, he came out of it. He's not. I think it's her way of dead. saying. So let me ask you this question. I'm glad you survived. Toward you. Okay. Why don't was you let her finish her answer? The evening of the accident, that your dad was okay. Yeah, that not fatal. He he was gonna be mendable. Maybe okay. some rehab. Well, that's a lot to say. Basically, are you okay, Dad? Did you ask him that that day? On what the phone? is your question? I I'm sure I said I'm glad you're down from the mountain. Glad you're here with us. I'm glad you're okay. You yeah. believe you talked to him, right? I believe I did. Yeah, and that's what it feels like. But and your first question is, are you okay? But this right? is seven years How later. How are you doing, right? Yes. If somebody, I think for anyone that had gone through a big accident, it's that checking in with them. And and uh, fair to say, you don't recall him saying anything <sighs> other than he he was okay. I think, as I mentioned, he said, "I'm hurting." I have some broken ribs. So you actually do remember the response? This is my recollection. Maybe it's my sister saying, we think he's okay. He's got some broken ribs. Now the I'm famous, that, that refers to my client, right? He's famous think, because he collided with a celebrity, right? That's how I take that. So he knew who, who she was. Or people were reporting on it. 8 p.m. that night. Kind of looks that way. And do you have any idea where this link went? The link. You've asked the most it. Important it's piece asked of and answered. Somebody object. In trial For today. fuck's sake. It looks like it's somewhere out there. Where's the my goat? Sphere. God. Goat. Okay. Uh, it sounds like sarcasm to me too. Like it to sounds like this spotlight. is a link to the accident and it's I agree. I'm famous. This was pre collision, right? Dad yeah, liked to be in the big, spotlight. Big energy. <laughs> what kind of big energy? No, don't say that. Just rearrange the E D B letters. Now. Yeah, it's like trying to make fetch happen with the I'm famous. It's like I've got other uses for your throat. Stop trying to make fetch happen. I'm thinking back when my mom was 76. I don't want to hear Did your you story. Did you notice things? This is pre-collision. So let's just say in the year before that. Mom, Dad's starting to get older. Did you think to yourself about that? I never felt like my dad was getting older or that I had noticed something like that. So when he's 68 years old, never considered like... He's starting to get older. I mean, by numbers, yes. Um, but he didn't seem to slow down, it lots seems. lots of people in my family that I've watched age. You know, my mother, my grandmother, my father and mother-in-law. I know what that's like, you know, my mom that can't remember the name of that author. Um, so, but when there's a marked change in somebody's cognition, memory and just functioning it's a it's more of a switch type feeling it didn't feel like it didn't feel gradual do you remember the fact that your dad and that's important had a stroke to this contributed 
first of all, did your dad have a stroke before the ski incident? I'm not aware of a stroke. I know he had an occlusion uh, with the lost some visibility in his eye. I think it's like a restricted blood vessel. Do you recall in your deposition saying he had a stroke? I think you called it a stroke in the eye, meaning... Did you call it a stroke? If I did, I misspoke and I should have had an opportunity to correct that. Well, you did have an opportunity. I was not aware that. of that. Snappy. Can we get back so, to where the GoPro is, please? I'll, I'll dig it out. He moved away to. from it. So let's keep going. Your dad uh, had an event where the, the reason he's not sitting there and flipping eye, through pages I mean, right is because they have was, limited time. Uh, essentially turned off and he lost his right eye. Is that fair? He lost some vision in his right eye. And, you know, what are the odds for somebody that spent a lifetime committed to right. eye health, right? There's a reference to, he, he's an optometrist and he's not a medical physician, true? He's an optometric physician, an optometrist. So here's my question. Is he a medical physician, an, an, an MD? No. No. Okay, so uh, now let's go through. few statements there's here. more people in court this afternoon I'll tell you what I, I think this will be the most efficient way thank you for your commentary Owens a couple weeks before the um, uh, ski collision your dad went to a doctor and he said he thinks all of a sudden he's gotten old all of a sudden Do you, did he ever express those sentiments to you no and it sounds like you never went to the doctor with him. Is that fair? I did take him to appointments. Um, I didn't sit in the room with his primary care provider and himself. Pre-collision? Did you take him to any doctor appointments? Mm, no, not that I can recall. Right. Okay, so, uh, and you said, like, your dad wouldn't have told me that. For instance, of his depression, he wouldn't have told me. And, and is that just a little, like a sense of pride? I'm not gonna share mental health information with my daughter. I think it's, it's more of his role as a parent. I've been involved in mental health care. And so we talk openly about mental health challenges. I think he has a little bit of, you know, um, I'm the parent and I don't wanna worry you. I don't wanna bother you. So what my question was, uh, was that a, like a sense of pride? I'm not going to share mental health and that, my mental she health said it wasn't pride. with my daughter. Do you believe that or not? She didn't say mm, that. Mr. Owens, I don't know that I would choose the word pride. I think I would sensitivity say he didn't want to burden me as his, as his daughter. All right. So there's possible that he was doing mental health th issues on the side without telling you. Fair? I have not reviewed his medical records, so that is fair. Okay. By the way, how long had you been out of the house in the time of the ski collision? So, like, had you been married? At the ski collision? Yeah, you... when did you move out of the house? After high school or after? Or... Yeah, so I left in 1992. Okay, and we're in 16. Eight plus 16 is 24. You'd been out of the house 24 years? That's correct. Okay. And you would see your dad maybe, let's say, in the three months prior to the ski collision. Do you agree you didn't, you didn't call or see your dad once? Um, what? That was very surprising information to me after your team had pulled the phone records. Is that true? I have no reason to believe it's not true. Um, and That's you would see him. That's a really him, long time, uh, though. Did you see him about the same before the ski collision and after the ski collision? That like would be two to four times a year. I would have it started there. It's been there. a little harder, especially with COVID. I don't feel like I've seen him as much. Um, gotcha. And part of it is, you know, I still had kids at home, so. Um, yeah. It was easier to say, oh, we're going to come through on summer vacation, and... Um, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. By the way, COVID was hard. Did your dad get COVID like twice in six months? He did get COVID, I believe, more than once. In like not too far. 
not like one month, but like six months or something. What's that Does have this to sound do right? With anything. That sounds correct. And that's extremely hard on him. Just that. True. COVID was hard on all of us. Yeah. <laughs> fair. But that's in terms fair. of some of the feelings of isolation, for instance, um, that that's exacerbated by COVID. Fair. Yeah. All right. In addition to your he is dad's leading this eye is cross examination on the right, leading you agree is appropriate. that he so yes, also was Jane, severely this, impaired on the he left He should be leading eye. more. I would not agree with that. All right. Let me get rid of the word severely. You, <laughs> you recall him being impaired on the left eye prior to the ski collision? Prior? No, I am not aware of that. Uh, do you recall him ever walking into walls? No. One prior. You, correct. One of your sisters in, uh, mentioned that. Do do you know anything about that? I have this not case was filed that. in no. February 2019. That he would ask people no, standing on the right side of him. The collision was February 26. So he could see them. Did you observe that ever? Yeah. Typically, when we're walking, we would. Um, oh no, February yeah. 4th, 2019. Okay. The accident was. And just to be February, technical, so yeah, doesn't work very yes. February 26, 2016. So, so right Sorry. before. A three-year uh, statute of limitations. Do you agree one of the reasons he retired was the stroke event that had left him uh, deprived of oxygen in his vision? I do not agree with that. Okay. If your dad so testified in his own deposition. Then uh, I would go with my dad's. I have not read his deposition. Thank you. Do you agree that he adjusted his skiing to the right side of the slope because of his in the because of his vision issues. I think that was typical. He would, um, yeah. So that's a yes. Yes. And he had to be picky about which days he skied. Like if, uh, if it was a snowy day uh, with limited visibility, he wouldn't go because of his vision. Do you agree or disagree? I don't know that. I think because he was retired, he would choose his ski days based on when it would feel the most, the best day to ski. So I'm just going to tweak my question a little bit. Did you know that he would adjust his skiing days based on visibility for that day? I did not know that. Okay. Let's talk about the prostate cancer. Um, Why? Uh, do you know the severity? I guess they rate prostate cancers. Gleason, six, seven, eight, or nine. Have you heard of this? Six, seven, eight, nine. I think 10. they were monitoring his numbers for a long time. And 10 out of 10 is the worst. Are you familiar with the Gleason scale for prostate cancer? I am not. Okay. Other than that, there is a scale. So. And do you know if your dad was a seven, for instance, not the least, but not the most? I do not know. I've not reviewed my dad's medical records. And separate then from the Gleason scale or his records, just did you understand, like, this isn't just the most minimal cancer. It actually had become malignant. I knew they were monitoring his numbers, you know, so, uh, so that okay. makes sense that when they decided to operate, it was because the number had justified that decision. Thank you. And I'm just going to restate my question. Were you aware his cancer had become He's malignant? Like you didn't answer. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you recall how many years prior to the ski incident that cancer was? I really do not recall. I would say surgery, if I had to guess, 2008. One of the things they cut off was his, his testosterone. Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, as a result, he became, uh, in the records, uh, he, quite emotional. Uh, do you agree? Objection on our relevance. Yeah, agreed. We're dealing with Over, his emotions. Overruled. Thank you. Do you recall him being becoming quite emotional? I did not experience that. More so after the accident, it, much more notable. Um, Thanks. Let's stay pre-accident. <laughs> pre-accident, I never experienced the Thanks. increase in emotion. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Drew, by the way, after the accident, how long was it until you went and visited your father? That's a great question. I think he was at my place end of May. I would imagine that summer at some point. Okay. So the ski collision was in end of February. Mm -hmm. 
And so are you saying like three months? He, he was at my house end of May, so I saw him again three months. Okay, that was the first time you saw him after Yeah. Typically when we would come down, it would be like in July, so we would probably have seen him then. I can't review for certain. Do you recall there being a motion regarding the prostate? So I'm sort of prostate cancer, so I'm separating the testosterone issue. I mean, uh, that's a big deal, isn't it? Your it dad, is a big deal. I think he was scared. I think his, um, his father had similar issues, so um, he had kind of, re he had lived that experience, so he was concerned about it. How old, by the way, was your, your dad's mom and dad when, are they both deceased? They are. And at what ages, do you know? Um, it's a good question. This is getting into medical history. 2002, 2004. I, I would say I maybe would in their 80s. those questions easily. 70s? Perhaps 70s, yeah. And what did your, dad, your dad's dad pass away from? Was it prostate I think cancer? it was compl complications with prostate cancer. And your dad's mom, what did he, she pass away from? She had broken a hip and then ended up getting pneumonia. Let's talk about your, your dad's hearing for a minute. So your dad, uh, about how many years ago did he start wearing hearing aids? So my first memory of my dad with hearing aids, my younger sister was kind of an infant. And so, because I remember she would make noises and he would kind of like, whoa, that's loud. So I think he... Like five years, 10 years, 20 years She's ago? trying yeah. to remember. 40, She's 40 years ago. 40 years ago, he's yeah. been wearing hearing aids. She's, ex yeah. and, uh, She's explaining. Do you agree one side is worse than the other, or do you know? I don't know that. I think technology's advanced hearing aids today are much better than they were 40 years ago. And uh, as far as severity of his hearing loss just prior to the ski incident, mm -hmm. um, uh, do you know? Can you quantify that at all? So there are times, say, in the morning when we're brewing coffee and he doesn't have his hearing aids in. Okay, let's right? talk about when his hearing aids were in prior to the accident. Do you agree he still had some impairment? Minimal, but yes. He had to actually read lips. Do you agree? I think he's a people person, so he really does read lips and read people. So pre-ski incident, even with his hearing aids, he read lips. Do you agree? I, I think he, he does, not because he wasn't hearing, though. What? Do you agree that part of his that's hearing an odd, impairment, an even odd with hearing aids, was he couldn't hear high voices, She's higher frequencies, like a woman's voice. Do you know that? He's trying to get to I the fact that- I don't know that, that for certain, but I know that hearing loss happens in ranges, so that would make sense. Okay, so we've talked about his eyes, his ears, his cancer. Let's talk about his heart. Do you recall that prior to the ski accident, your dad had a, some heart palpitation issues? I was not aware of that. Okay. Did you see any effects of aging in your dad prior to the ski accident? Any at all? I think his hair was getting a little more gray. Okay, anything else? Um, oh, he seemed really pretty on target. So perfect health prior to the That's ski collision? That's not what she I said. I wouldn't use the word perfect, but I you think for someone who was 69, he, he really worked at being healthy, um, took his supplements, made sure he exercised, he's a swimmer, he just worked hard at it. He still swims. Still Got rest. I believe so. Still goes to yoga. Stayed hydrated. He sure tries. He's dedicated to his health. Post-skiing, he went, post-ski collision, he went on like 10 international trips. Does this sound right? I don't know if 10 is the number. He traveled quite a bit. I think he had a, I've retired, I'm supposed to do this kind of thing. And uh, I've retired, I travel now. Did he ever uh -huh. do like international trial, travel pre-ski incident? Did he do some of those? Yeah. And did he ever go alone? Usually he traveled with a friend. No one goes to Europe alone, do they? I mean, I have. It, it's good to have good company. Lori, why is the attorney not helping her? Helping her how? 
this is cross examination. I don't. As part of the stroke workup, your dad had a lot of imaging done of his brain. So there's nothing. Do you to know help. anything about that? There's nothing to help. No, I do not. Do you know, for instance, if he was diagnosed with microvascular disease prior to the ski collision? I do not. How about moderate diffuse volume loss atrophy? <laughs> I do not. All right. Do you know enough to talk about the fact that as we age, our brain's volume decreases? I'm aware of that. Do you recall that he was diagnosed with a plaque problem as a result of the retinal eye occlusion? What are you talking about? Okay. Did you know he was, for instance, prior to the ski collision on an anti-cholesterol, anti-statin, mm. I should say statin, oh. of some sort of cholesterol Him plaque grilling reduction the medication? I did not know it. Right. Wouldn't surprise me, though. And if he was About on like his medical seven to history nine is just... medications just prior to the ski incident, I take it you don't know what any of those are. I understand. I, I knew he took some medications along with his supplements. Like I said, he, he she said he's listens healthy. to doctor's he orders. Said, he well, would this, take what this, was this, prescribed this, to him. This, Let's this, talk this, about this, supplements. This. Your dad loves supplements. So he's trying Is that to true? Qualify. I would say, yeah. Like 40 a day, even before the ski collision. I he, don't know the number. Foundation. That is the he's foundation. He's so testified in his deposition. He's asking that, her the foundation. I, I think she's about she, to answer that. Go ahead. She said, Go I ahead. don't know. I just said, I do not know the number of supplements he takes. But, but is it like a whole glass full every day? Objection foundation. What size is a glass? I have not watched we my have, dad take his vitamins. We have what's your, what's, what do you know? Like how many supplements a day Sleeping does he in, take? Staying hydrated. So we'll talk vitamins. things like we were just talking about vitamin D, and and I had said I know it's <laughs> better absorbed with vitamin K, and That's he true. said he did take a I, vitamin I, D, I, and I, I said oh, you might want to look and see if there's K in it. How about number? I know he I'm takes looking. vitamin D. I don't know his, the number. <laughs> Everybody loves their vitamin D. 40? I get it. Objection foundation. Oh my God! Why do you rules? care? Go ahead. Ask him. He's going to testify. I, it would surprise me a little bit. Yeah. I know he takes supplements. You didn't. Uh, how about therapy pre? So mental health therapy mm -hmm. pre collision. Mm -hmm. uh, were you aware your dad had undergone counseling <laughs> the, for the plaintiff's anger attorney and other yawning problems? has me dying. Uh, I was not aware that he saw a counselor for anger issues. I do know that he has seen a counselor for mental health. So pre-collision, he's easy to anger. Do you recall that? VA 1131, Defense 113C. He's easy to anger. That's why he's going to see a therapist. Does this ring a bell prior do, to the collision? Do I recall that? I have not read his medical records. Angry, discussing family conflict. Do you recall this? Uh, this was back in... The plaintiff's attorney so is ready for a nappy nap. 2016, so seven years earlier. I get it. Was he going through a divorce right around then, 09? I don't think it was a divorce, but I think, did he split with his girlfriend in 08? So, possibly. Was his girlfriend mm -hmm. issue. Okay, he wanted... The patient desires to feel justified in his anger. Uh, does this ring any bells, 09? This is going to I, I, no, change your personality like and no. whether his personality, in fact, changed or not. This is really an important line of questioning for him. Or I just wish he, he had done display it. it. Maybe first. he had a self-awareness. Because now we're so far about, afield like that we're like, break up with his girlfriend in 09 in terms of emotions. Because we're talking so that's about, why about it matters. emotions. It matters because she yeah. testified that his well, personality was changed. His, He's saying, um, no, it didn't. He was always cancer like that. Treatment. So the year following, so I think he probably needed a lot of support and healing, and um, I don't think he feel, felt like he'd got that from his current partner. I'm okay. really so disappointed he, we he didn't had, ask about had the GoPro an more. unsuccessful relationship with a woman prior to the ski collision, true? That's true. He was, he was working on that. And he, he went through two divorces, true? That's true, too. Had not remarried, right? 
to my understanding. And how many years went by between, like, uh, the second marriage came right after the first d divorce, true? That's correct. And then the after, uh, how many years went by after the second divorce and before the ski collision? Let me check my math here. I would say. I would never be able to do this. Maybe 10 years. I'd be like, All right, what? So, uh, I need my phone. Did he have any uh, like life partners during those 10 years? We're talking about his relationships, for instance, in this trial. He's had a hard time like having long term relationships mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying for those 10 years prior, mm -hmm. did he have long term relationships? And these relationships? are fair questions. Um, by long term, I can't, I can't the think of The attorney's like, was there really a change though? Um, or was this part for the, the course? one that it split in 2009? And I'm not sure how long they were together, maybe two or three years. Uh, by the way, I don't know if we formally admitted D113, but I would like to do so. Okay. Any objections? You would like to admit. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> uh, we talked about it yesterday. What? We why are we doing it now then? Jody. I'm so Why are we no, doing this in the middle of this witness? This is so odd. Wait till the witness finishes. And do it that she, she, but, her uh, face is well, all of us. Would you prefer I keep going, Judge, or we deal with it right here? Why are we dealing with it right now? now or, yeah. Are you going to use the exhibit with this witness? Uh, <laughs> this I don't is... know, but I do want it in the record <sighs> when I'm referring to it. Why don't we wait? We, we can handle it over the break. You maybe, can do it after this, this witness. witness or need to ask this witness what about is it. happening? Um, I guess I will. So move for D one thirteen F, which are VA. Or excuse me, D one thirteen. We're going to have to start playing VA. Battleship. Stipulated VA records. The point Greater of all of this security. testimony is the plaintiff is alleging that at the time of the There's ski the collision, records. things were good, and then everything changed okay. afterwards. Okay, defendant 113 here. is received. So things shifted. These records indicate that uh, your your dad and he's challenging that difficulty with this daughter. The patient mentioned difficulty with the anger management. Uh, did you ever know your dad to have an anger management problem prior to the ski collision? I'm sorry, Your Honor, what page is that? I... 113F. What's, what VA page is it? Thank you. 1134, second paragraph. So my question again, did you ever know your dad to have uh, difficulty with anger? I'm sorry, just a second, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm on 113, I don't see anything here. Council. Why don't you why don't you show council? Show him. I gave them a hard copy too. Okay. Just are, are you good to go, Mr. Sykes? Uh, where is it? Where is it on here? Okay, thank you. There's please. no way they're getting two, you, three more uh, witnesses uh, this afternoon. Hey, did you ever know your dad to have an anger management problem? It's just I never knew my dad to have an anger management problem. Okay. If it's in his medical records prior to the ski collision, I take it you don't dispute that. They're his medical records, yeah. If that's his perception. He struggles with self-disclosure that is self-focused rather than other-focused. Did you see that in your dad? Ski collision. Oh, he blamed people for shit? Is that what we're He's saying? So focused on himself rather than others? I think he does have that tendency. Um, or but he did prior to the accident. It's after the accident, it's been magnified for sure. Okay. So the answer is yes. Yes, and more so after now. the accident. Yep. Okay. The focus of this session was to help him identify his responses and the associated feelings and communicate those in less blaming ways. Did, did you know him to like blame others frequently pre-ski collision? No. I think it's just great that he was trying to get tools. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting well, to see. He's getting tools because he has a problem with <laughs> Uh, communicating It'll be interesting to see with the others plaintiff that doesn't blame them. Testify Did you observe about this. that prior to the ski collision? I don't think any humans are perfect, and he's acknowledging these are things I'm working on. That's how I, I 
understand that. Okay, so I am trying to phrase these in yes or no, but I'm not gonna cut you off. So I'm gonna ask it again though. Why are we dealing with Prior it at all right now? Collision. Is what Lolly asked. Lolly, because this daughter is their key witness. Did you observe? I think that your for dad the plaintiff had problems communicating about with how much he changed he them. from the ski accident. The yes, defense is challenging that. No, I did not observe him blaming others. And so this is yes. all challenging that testimony. Yeah. I'll, did you I'll go with no? Did you observe? And I'm as we get deeper into cross, it seems that Polly's that vision of her father style and way of dealing maybe, with people often uh, got him in trouble. Pre-accident. Maybe Pre -accident. kept no. kept to this is my view and of my he would father. Like to gain greater insight and into that his interpersonal there, difficulties that she is not acknowledging or did not see did or know, did not see did, because did you she did not want to acknowledge your dad pre-accident to have some interpersonal so, difficulties. That's why we're here. Yes, I think he something he worked on. He did but, have multiple divorces, people correct? Don't go 13 years without talking to like your your sibling, right? That's that's more than just I like don't most believe people. that to be true in my experience. She challenges that fact. So we're talking. So that's why this is relevant. It's true. Everyone. She has also said he was very healthy before, difficulties, and so that's why going through the medical. Their well, healthy for but it. had cancer. Healthy but had the stroke. Healthy I agree, but, but the smart ones this do. is that. So that's why it's here. I think it could have been done. I think it could have been done in a different patient pattern. Patient had a number of recent stressors, perception. which he appeared to minimize. Okay, did you ever know your dad to minimize uh, other stressors and focus on something sort of obsessively? Not pre-accident, post-accident, yes. Okay, how about that he would uh, hyper-focus on a problem without dealing with broader issues that were affecting that? I would say he does have a tendency to hyper-focus. And that was pre-collision, right? Yes, way more so after the accident. Did his eyesight problem, hearing problem, heart issues, prostate cancer, did those somewhat narrow his abilities, his activity level? I, I really didn't see that change or modify a lot. I think um, not till after the accident. How about at all? Just like the five years before the, uh, the accident? Any, re any reduction in activities at all? Right. I think I would see my dad, you know, make some adjustments. Like he would, he would learn because he's not, he's not reckless. So is that a yes or no? Re reduction in activity level prior to the ski collision. Yes, very, very minimal. And one of the things he told his doctor three weeks before the ski collision was he was not able to do the things he had been able to do. Do you, does that surprise you? Very much so. Okay. You don't dispute the medical record three weeks before the auto, the uh, ski collision, do you? I would have a hard time disputing his, his records. Migraines. Uh, her perception of he her was, father is being He would have challenged. migraines That's pre- That's the point, because she's a very good uh, witness. I still like her. Right? Occasionally. And they were de debilitating when he got, got them, true? Correct. And he would actually have vision problem associated with his migraines. When he had migraines, he had, actually had even less vision. Do you agree? I know he would typically look for a, a dark place you know, to just uh, recover from that. So your answer? I, he was sensitive to light, and that would be Same visual. Okay. Now let's talk about his back and spine problems pre-collision. Uh, he had a foot drop, didn't he? He, he walked differently pre-collision. She's like, my dad had no I signs of aging. I wasn't aware of a foot drop and he's or a like, different walk. Um, you know what a foot drop is? Ma'am? Vaguely. So he's like, ma'am. More drag one of your feet. Is that fair? Okay. I didn't notice that in my dad. You never knew of one? No. Okay. 
How about uh, weakness or pain of uh, loss of sensation? Not aware of that. Incredibly common to be sensitive about, to light with migraine. Uh, and he did have spine surgery. Not Do you uncommon agree? with that. Yeah, was it a compressed back? disc or something? Right. That's was it compressed or that's herniated? not small time medicine, right? Spine surgery is a big deal. It feels like a big deal when you go yes. through it. Knee injury. Oddly, is this true? Before the ski collision, he actually injured his knee skiing. Does it's, this sound familiar? It's very I common. Vaguely remember meniscus, maybe. Skiing. I've done that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, there's inherent risks in skiing. Knees being one of them. So the answer? <laughs> yes. Did that require That's surgery? That's a good line for the recall? plaintiff. I don't believe Or for the defendant. There's a... Shoulder problems. There's an inherent risk in skiing. Do you recall having pre-ski collision shoulder problems? I think that's a good I think answer. He did and have I think he should have issue. followed up on it. And what do you recall about it? Falls are a much. risk of skiing. Why didn't hamstring we follow up on injury. that? injury. A torn hamstring. Do you recall this pre-injury? I do not. Osteoarthritis. Are you familiar with that term? Yes, I know what that is. And were you aware your your father had osteoarthritis Follow up on prior the to the ski of skiing. No. injury? Did he also Trigger have dry finger. Skin? Do you know what that is? Yes, I do know that. He had issues with his thumb. By the way, do you recall one of the reasons he has hearing problems is from shooting a lot of guns without ear protection? In the military. Have you heard this before <laughs> or am I the first to tell you? Could have also been concerts, but I do know that he was in the military, so possibly. All right. When he was young, he was a rocker. Is that fair? Um, if rocker, you mean like the Kingston Trio? Yeah, he was uh, a rocker. <laughs> I think he told me he was a rocker in his youth. Do you know anything about that? Well, you know, he's in college, like in the 68, in 68 so we're talking All right. Peter, Paul, and Mary, Kingston Trio. Nick still, real rocker. Still good music. Yeah. All right, insomnia. Did you know him Where, to have sleeping what just problems happened? Pre, prior to the ski collision? I I knew that sleep was kind of a challenge for him. That's something that he shares with my older sister Shay, um, and so they would talk about different techniques for getting a good night's sleep. So his perception of himself and his daughter's perception of him is very funny. I don't know if I would call it insomnia. She was like rocker like the Do you want to read me a definition for insomnia? Sure, taking a medication for it. Oh. Did you know that he one of the medications he took, like a lorazepam? I'm a 90s or, bitch. Uh -huh. My or definition of rock is a little I different than 60s rock. he took all three of those at one rock. time. Not at one time. I apologize Counsel. throughout Jesus. the years before. Uh, so that's how I would define it, requiring prescription medication. Okay. So I would defer to my dad's medical record. Like, I don't know. Respiratory problems. Were you aware your dad had respiratory problems pre-collision? I, I knew that he kept an inhaler, that he'd had a um, had pneumonia at some point, and so he felt like, um, yeah. I don't ever see him using the inhaler, okay. but he I knew He's he a rocker. It. He's a doer. He's a goer. He's a poster. <laughs> it's irrelevant. It's, it is relevant, though. Okay. There has to be some end to this. No, there doesn't. Uh, four more days. Yeah, overruled. He said we only have four more days. Half time, so it's not affecting your time, Mr. Sykes. He's a midnight toker. He's a skier. Oh, we could rewrite an Lower entire song. Lower urinary tract issues. Oh, geez. Perhaps those are prostate related. Do you know of any, anything about not that? She kidney doesn't want problems. to talk about her dad's dick, sir. Do you recall if he had some kidney problems pre-collision? I do not recall that. Like uh, that he had chronic renal insufficiency. You've never heard that before? No. Cholesterol medication, what'd you tell me? You knew he was on a med for that or you did I not? didn't know he was on a medication okay. for that, but that's pretty common for that age group, right? And restless legs, were you familiar that he had that? Chad that is a I think I, I think I was aware of that. Did you and your sisters joke that like he's actually thinning the sheets because he kicks a lot? It sounds vaguely familiar. All right. Yes. Why are they approaching? Oh, well, we can answer some questions. 
Part of the reason that they are doing all of this is to challenge her perception. She's a very good witness for her dad, but she was saying he wasn't, she hadn't noticed sign of age signs of aging before um, the ski collision. And the defense is rightfully though somewhat annoyingly going through. Well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And she's like, my dad's healthy. She, and he's like, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? So he's challenging the, witnesses perception of her father and pointing out to the jury her perception of her father and who her father is are two different things she is kind of her her perception of her father is uh colored or tainted by her relationship with her father so she is viewing viewing him really through the best possible light um maybe to the exclusion of some other facts that might exist and that's what they're talking about now so it, it's ad nauseum at this point but let's get to some questions Emily, do you think he apologized because he wants her to come back? Maybe. Or maybe he realized that the jury thought it was off-putting. Or maybe his client scolded him and said the jury's going to like them. Um, Lindsay said, just hit me. She looks like actress Maura Tierney. I've heard, I've seen that in the chat quite a lot. Are they taking a break? Is Owens breaching HIPAA? No. Discussing these medical records, records in open court is not a violation. Um, those medical records were provided and it applies to medical providers, not to this witness or this lawyer. Those medical records were properly provided and they're allowed to question them. Things that are allowed in courtrooms are often not allowed elsewhere. It's just like if you sign an NDA, you can still go to court and talk about things. The NDA All doesn't right, we'll stop take it. a short break. Thank you. All right. We're on break. Who saw that coming? Not me. It was very abrupt. Can we approach? And now we're on break. Let's stretch. Ugh. Let's answer some questions. Bop it said I had Peter Paul and Mary on my bingo card. <laughs> Woodstock was 1969. Dad could have been a rocker. This lawyer's questions seem to be really degrading to the plaintiff. That's his job. Um, and Marissa, I appreciate the comment and I bring it up not to disagree with you. I bring it up so that we can talk about what's expected in court. Court is a adversarial process where the parties go about tearing into one another and blaming each other for what happened. That happens in criminal cases. That happens in civil cases. It is an adversarial process. Sometimes the adversarialness feels really uncomfortable when we're watching it happen in real time. That is a central feature of the process. This lawyer's questions seem to be really degrading to the plaintiff. Yes. Dude is a doctor who specialized in eyeballs. That doesn't mean not having an MD behind his name matters. He has other letters. Yes. And what they are going to do is continue to clarify. It's why they gave Dr. Curry such a hard time about not being board certified. And we're all like, who cares? She's obviously qualified. They think it might matter to some of the lawyers or some of the jurors. Lauren said, I went to the link and it's a pick in comments. I posted them on Twitter. We'll DM you. So the link is still active. The fuck? Hold on. So the link, the link is still active. How can the link be active? All we've heard in court is the link is not active. Lauren, I will go look for that on Twitter. If you tagged me on it, my, my Twitter gets quite busy. So I know I don't see everything, but I will go look for it um, for sure. So let me go. Look, if you'll DM it to me, it might make it a little easier for me to find. If you already DM'd it for me, I'll go look in there because that is curious. Um, let's see, because I get tagged uh, quite substantially throughout the day and things get buried on the tweet tweets on the street streets. So I will go look in a moment. Um, let's see. Emily, you should host a show where influencers and pop culture personalities can argue with their grievances with each other, but in a mock court format. I know we should do like influencer mediation. Um, that's not as catchy as like influencer court, but yes, I, I'm happy to. Pop culture is where I live. Um, Andy Cohen, call me. I want to come to the VPR. The VP I know it's filming today. Did you guys see that it's filming today? The Vanderpump's reunion is filming today with two different cast setups so they can talk to everybody despite the restraining order. Um, Poison Elf said, who chose to try this case on live video? I have no idea. Did uh, Gwyneth think she could get her own spin on the media popular side? I don't know. If so, she's failing miserably. I think I feel the frostbite through the monitor. I don't know who decided to do it. 
I don't know how that all went down. There's a lot of stuff in this case that's not easy to get to um, records wise. Let's see. How can Jenny be subpoenaed? Can't type sorry and still not be present just to do with different states. Jana, what we heard later is that uh, it was an illegal subpoena. So it seems that she is not properly subpoenaed and that's part of the issue. Question, why can Jenny refuse to show up? Can people do that? If they're not properly subpoenaed, yes, they can. Because make me, that's why, right? How do you make someone show up if they're not properly subpoenaed? There's no authority to do that. And I imagine if she's, I speculate, just if she has sought the advice of counsel, that somebody would have let her know if that is a proper subpoena that can be enforced or not. You can try to subpoena people, and if they want to show up, they can, but you can't force them to show up if they're not properly subpoenaed with the authority of court because it's not a proper subpoena. Not legal advice, just practical speculation on how that might be working. Lorianne or Lorraine, probably Lorraine, your glasses are feisty and I love them. If they only have to prove who is guilty, why is the lawyer saying it's not fair that witnesses are saying his life changed? First, okay, a couple things. First, we are in a civil case looking for liability. So that's not being picky. I'm just trying to explain. So we're all on the same page because as we watch future trials, all of you will be like, no, well, actually, I know the thing. So first, they are trying to find liability. But once you find liability, you have to find damages. So when it comes to negligence, the things that you are looking for are a duty, a breach of duty that causes the thing, and then damages. Damages are an element of the negligence. Now, the plaintiff has to have been injured in some way. They are showing the plaintiff was injured. That damages discussion is in the elements of negligence, but there is another damages discussion which goes to how much damage. So there are two damages discussions here that we are potentially dealing with. Hopefully that helps. Um, Temp said three daughters, three million, and the father in bad health and mental capacity. Anyone else getting incentive? And that's what that's what Paltrow is going to argue, or Paltrow's attorneys are going to argue. That's exactly what they're going to argue, is that this is motivated by money and a desire to be the center of attention. I wrote that exact comment before. Are they watching? Christina, I'm not sure what that was referring to, but who knows? Uh, St. Elmo's Fire asked question, why didn't Paltrow settle? I'm new to the case and we'll catch up tonight. We don't know why Paltrow didn't settle, but not all cases settle. This plaintiff might not have wanted to settle and Paltrow might say, I'm not in the wrong. Why would I settle? Because once you settle, even though it shouldn't be the case, when somebody settles, what do you think? Chat, when somebody settles, what do you think? Do you think, oh, they must not have done anything wrong and they just don't want to deal with the hassle of it? Is that your first thought? Chat, is it? Is that your first thought? Or when somebody settles, do you look at it and go, huh? What'd you do? What'd you do that you have to settle? Right? Isn't that the assumption? Isn't it the assumption that they're admitting guilt when they settle? So they're admitting wrongdoing, right? So I think when people settle, you think that they are trying to hush up the truth. They are trying to um, assuage their own guilt. And so I think a settlement's a lose situation if Paltrow's like, no, I didn't do this. Right? Sometimes a settlement might truly be for the purposes of just keeping it out of the public eye, but people are going to assume that that means that you did it. So that's the problem with settlement. Speaking of you did it, chat, do you know what you haven't done yet? You haven't, we haven't subscribed everybody. There are almost 18,000 of you watching. Um, so if you haven't hit that subscribe, subscribe, join the chat. Uh, come on in. The water's nice. This is what we do here. Emily, who are the observers in the courtroom? Journos, friends, family, general public, any and all of the above. I have no idea. Um, it's open court. Anyone is welcome to come in. It doesn't seem like this. there's a line. I imagine tomorrow court will be quite busy. We expect Gwyneth Paltrow to testify tomorrow. But it is 2.45. Court goes to 5. So they don't have a lot of time, and they're supposed to put the uh, plaintiff on the stand. I don't know if we'll get to Paltrow tomorrow. It might get pushed till Monday. So... We are seeing um, we are seeing this push a little bit more quickly. Soph H, loved seeing you on Lorraine this morning. Love from the UK. It was very much the middle of the night here in Middle Tennessee. I loved being on this morning. Can I tell you, chat, it's just us friends here. The way I almost fell over when the guest before me this morning was Eddie Izzard. 
um, who is also now going by Susie. I was just, I, I logged in. And so I'm kind of backstage to, to the Lorraine show, just watching their conversation. I was like, I can't believe this is my life right now. I mean, it is four o'clock in the morning, but I can't believe this is my life right now. Um, and I was just gobsmacked. I, I, I could not even, I could not chill. I had no chill. Um, I've seen Eddie live a number of times and I was just, I was just thrilled. So I'm sure we'll see more reporting on that. Um, so I saw Susie with a Z Y and just was, just was just, thr just thrilled, just thrilled to see, um, thrilled to see it. I've seen, I I've seen them live and I was just, I was absolutely fucking starstruck this morning. It was, I was not expecting that. All I could think was Death Star Cantina. Oh, this is, there's no audio in the courtroom yet, but I, <laughs> I was just, I fangirl, I fangirl fellow, fangirl fell over okay. this morning and I thought it was incredible. So thank you. And I saw so many law nerds from the UK saying, Oh my God, I saw you. I saw you. Um, so I don't know if that'll be on YouTube. If my clip will be shared by their show on YouTube, if it is law nerds, send it to me and we'll talk about it more. Um, we'll talk about it more another time. If you guys want to hear kind of the backstage of those types of experiences when I'm on TV, um, let me know. I tend to talk about those things on our members live because they're a little off topic for our our um our conversations here but it was always interesting being on all different types of television talking about these cases stephanie asked how can what he told his therapist be something that the daughter is asked about why no objections here so uncomfortable that she should be asked what he said to his therapist um it's going to did you know this and did you know that it's going to evaluate her testimony you said your father was healthy you said that he had this this particular character that he acted this particular way but did you know these things why don't we wait but did you know these things that's why it's coming up this is certainly attorney sounds like toby from the office <laughs> that's funny um all right you guys don't forget to do the subscribe things. Sean, I hope you heal well. Ironically, had a car wreck yesterday. I'm sorry. Thank you for giving me something to get my mind off it while I recover. Car wrecks are worse. And it's the same with an accident like this. They can be worse on days two, three, and four. So while Paltrow's attorneys are going to make a lot of him posting immediately after, those things can be worse in the days to come. And that's what the experts are for to explain. So um, Kimberly, no way. Absolutely. I because if they are congratulate Susie I'm going to spend more time I with will, this witness. I I would reach out. It was just it would be so weird. It's like what who I'll are who the so, fuck are you? Okay, but that was love, 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 I'm, I'm going to rely on that and shorten my testimony. Okay. All right, we're going to get to a few more questions. Um if you type in the exact link to Google, it sends you to a picture of Whitney. They just showed two seconds ago, the toboggan girl. Interesting. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. So the link is, I will be substantially unthrilled if the link is still there. Like really not thrilled, really not thrilled, not thrilled at all. So, um, his assistants should have, should have, a. Uh, uh, subpoena all done by now and ready to hand it to her before she leaves off the stand. What's the issue? I don't know. And he's got a lot of lawyers in court. Somebody can type up a subpoena real quick. It's not that hard. Question, Emily, why don't they use the daughter's Thank depot you. if she doesn't want to come? Mr. Owens, you may proceed. They'll have to establish that she's unavailable to use it and they'll have to deal with that. Um, Cindy, why I had two surgical verte vertebrae and when I learned if your about that, the I joked I'm a mutant to uh, me before. saying I'm famous is like the bright side. I thought it was sarcastic too. The ski collision. I thought it was too. That he was preoccupied with paperwork and cleaning things out and not doing things he enjoyed doing that he used to do. Uh, do He's you know changed. any? Do you have any insights on that? I do not. Did you personally observe it? I did not. And <laughs> how long had it been since you saw your dad prior? We said three months after the ski collision, but I'm not sure I asked you. How many months prior had you seen him? I expect that we would have saw him either over the Christmas holiday okay. or perhaps Thanksgiving. We usually did one or the other. All right, so the 
were the accident was in May. It would have been five or accident six months. Accident was in February. Oh, you're absolutely right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking it would have been a couple uh, months. Two and months, that's months. is that's a moment when I don't think was your dad sort of a scary driver inappropriate uh, before. Like, mm -hmm. The ski collision. Oh, the wasps I think I mentioned he was a multitasker, so he did Ew. more things in the car than I wanted my teen drivers to witness. This is the first time he I've was ever seen this, but multitasking while driving. Texting, but he would actually read a book what? while driving on the interstate freeway. Is that true? I'd heard that rumor, like back when we were children. From your you know, sister. On a straight stretch, I think that was something that. From your sister. Yeah. That's bad judgment, isn't it? To actually read a book? I wouldn't recommend it. No I, yeah. What? Sustained. Well, do you think that is bad judgment if, if, if your dad was reading a book, driving? He just ruled on this. It's a, diff, it's a different question. Go ahead and move on, counsel. There's still no foundation, Thanks. counsel. It doesn't matter. All right. Wait, your Blitzen, dad. what? Is this a thing? Pe Our is this a thing people do? Wait, what? Like not on a bus when you're driving. Imaging after the collision. Is this something that people and do? Have made various conclusions. I take it you don't know. No, this was like about 20 that. years ago. She said no, when she was children, no, a child. She's 49. Psychology. Or... He said reading a book, not an audio book. Reading really, a book. Our experts have actually compared brain imaging before the collision and brain imaging He's after a reader. the collision and have made various conclusions. I take it you don't know anything about that? No, no advanced degrees in neuropsychology or... All right. And then your dad really received all of his health care at the VA. Maybe. Is that accurate? I think his primary care provider, he, he uses the VA. I'm, I'm talking like lots of medical care and lots of specialties. Do, are you aware of that? I think he really values his health and is always, you know, I mean, had those I listen to audiobooks. Would not surprise me. So pre-collision, like a lot of medical records. Wow. I think there's a continuity there that runs his whole life before accident, after accident. So I'm waiting for a yes on any of these. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Okay. Um, Her yes is delightful. They knew him best. Yes. Fair enough. The VA people. If you can answer the question. I think it depends on if you have longevity with your primary care provider. And sometimes with the VA, there's a lot of turnaround. They don't always stay a long time. Do you know that he actually did have a long-term relationship with his primary care provider? Reading while driving, if you're the one driving, incident. should be illegal everywhere. I don't know whether he did or not. Okay. I would be hopeful that Margaret, he did. Margaret Rasmussen, do you know that name? Maybe I'm misstating it. Never mind, don't worry. OK, then, so. Thanks for the commentary, Does counsel. Does it surprise you that your dad would go to the VA people and say, hmm, I want to be checked out. I want my thinking to be checked out. Did you ever hear him do that? that no, that, I did not. I've definitely seen people do makeup while driving. I get car sick. I can't do shit while driving. I, I was not aware. I okay. do know that he had follow-ups and health care visits, yes. Did he ever tell you that he had had three neuropsych assessments at the VA through his current treating providers? Pre-collision? No. I, I did, did oh not God, mean Lori. to switch on you. Thank okay. you. That's a good clarification. So like <laughs> one month after, good. one year after, one and three months after, that kind of thing. I knew that he was having follow-ups because he was really worried about his mental state. So I don't. Again, I haven't seen the medical records, but that I have a feeling the driving well. If that's what his medical record says. And that she did say he was a multitasker that made her uncomfortable. Or else, that they, they were all uh, average to above, above average in like 20 different categories. He did not share the response with me. I know he was doing a lot of work towards it, right? This is the boat I'm in. Cognitive work. I need things to be read to me. So you knew he was getting these assessments, but I've weren't made you myself saying, hey, Dad, looking at my what are they saying? Trying to find the road I'm supposed Didn't to turn you do on. that? I don't think I asked for medical, you know, information more about how are you doing? Do things feel less foggy for you? Okay. Are you I'm more, more... I'm, you're doing it. I'm proud of you. Keep doing the work. Keep following up. You can Post listen to podcasts while driving. Travel. All right. So he would visit. Listening's fine. U.S. states like Washington, Reading Oregon, a novel, Montana, not Idaho. Do you recall all of those? 
My car drives itself, but I can't let it drive itself because it makes me car sick. And then, in addition, he went to Peru and walked the Golden Trail. True? I, I can't speak to that. I do know he went to Peru. Okay. Do you remember, like, Machu Picchu? He went and visited Machu Picchu? He did not share that with me. Or I would have done that if I was in Peru. Wouldn't yes. that be a central feature that of Peru? That he floated down the Amazon? Did not. This is early 2017. Mm -hmm. So they about closed one Machu year Picchu after recently? The, the collision. Mm -hmm. Listening to audio uh, books, fine. Do you recall fine. how many weeks he was gone in Peru? He said it was... I think it was a couple weeks. Reading. Okay. And then Costa Rica, he did a zip line also the year after the accident. Do you recall this? I was not aware he did a zip line, no. Oh, he was traveling How about traveling Europe? After. Also the year after the accident. Do you recall he went to Europe the year after the accident? So I recall in 2017, he had tickets to go with Robin. Um, then things fell apart with that relationship, and so he went to Europe with my younger sister, Jenny. So the answer is... Yes, I'm aware he went to uh, Europe. He went to the Netherlands and Germany and Switzerland and Italy and France and Belgium. Correct. They said he stopped so. traveling yesterday. The Netherlands. He went there three different times. Is this that is true? a lot of traveling after. That's correct. And that's the year two and three after the accident. This paints okay. a very different picture than yesterday. You with me? Like you have to say, I can't testify. Do you know that? I was not aware he had gone three times. I was aware that he had traveled to the Netherlands. More than once? That's an extensive amount of traveling afterwards. I, into my recollection, twice. OK, Morocco. Yes. He twice visited Morocco. Hmm, that sounds correct. Why didn't we start with this? Canary Islands. Uh, this is the year after, uh, two years after the accident. That was the same time he went to Morocco. And the Canary Islands, I don't even know where those are. I should know. If they're not on a risk board, I don't know my geography. Do you know where it is? I, I would have to look at a map or an atlas as well. Okay. Thailand. He visited I've, Thailand three years after the accident. That's a lot yeah, of travel to get to Thailand. And each of these times he'd take pictures and post them with him smiling at all these great tourist spots. Do you agree? As huh. you do. Yes. Yes. She said, big, as you big do. Big smiles in front of a Buddhist temple, for instance, right? Yeah, we don't tend to post pictures of ourselves sad and, and in closets. No, we don't. We the, tend to. The answer is yes. Yes. Like Eiffel Tower. Huh. Uh, this is a very different picture than Italy, yesterday. The coast. Yesterday all it big was. Smiling pictures of Terry, true? Yesterday, the I picture seen was. I have a lot of those photos that you're talking about. I think there were quite a Facebook? bit of photos before the accident, too. I, I would want to make sure you could separate pre accident, post accident pictures. Right. And you defer to your dad on that, right? If I asked him, like, does this state look right? And he says yes. I mean, he'd be yeah, the guy. Possibly. Yesterday, right. the doctors were like, he is, he is kind of home, so stuck is it at fair home. To say and his, his travels he's not traveling did not anymore. Suffer as a result, of the ski That's collision. what they said yesterday. His this is low. Yes, you could say his travel companions might have suffered. <laughs> wow. That's different. That's the biggest shift for me this afternoon. We'll hear more of this, of course, when the plaintiff testifies, but that's the biggest shift from this afternoon. It's a very different picture than the uh, doctor's. One painted. clarification, Carleen, is that our. That's our girlfriend. Uh, Who? I heard some comment that they were engaged, and then I never heard that from her, her Carleen. To your knowledge, were they engaged? I never heard that word or fiancé used. I think that was their intent and plan. But... And then on the prostate cancer, I heard the word cured from plaintiff's counsel, but I actually never heard it from a witness. Do, do you... Uh, it no, sounded that, like fact, he said our dad, girlfriend. Uh, it is did. Cured? That's what I it sounded like to me, to too. Them. It was weird. It did, right? It's it sounded like he said our Thank girlfriend. Thank you, Mr. Owens. Mr. Sykes? Oh, sweet Jesus, it's done. <laughs> I have one second. We're playing <laughs> off the cross. <laughs> We're going to do a pickle fluff. He did say our girlfriend. It was the royal our girlfriend. 
Sir, you're gonna make... Ugh, sir, our girlfriend does not work. <laughs> it's not going to work. They didn't follow up on the GoPro much. Mr. That really Owens. annoys me. Asked you about um, uh, Sam Goldstein's comment about Terry being obsessed. Uh, do you know why Terry is obsessed with this case? It's a good you redirect. Good redirect. Oh, counsel, stop it. I think my dad is very principled and I think not only was he injured but I think this accident really hurt in a way that it was it hurt him in a way that somebody would just not care for him when he was injured it's like how dare they I think that his brain injury um he really does become consumed with things and I think feeling like writing this wrong for him uh, has really kind of consumed him. And he, he wanted to, to make it right. He wanted someone to at least apologize or Tell him acknowledge right. or be held accountable for their decision on that day. Okay. Do you have any experience in mental health? And if so, tell the jury what it is. Yeah, so I um, managed a mental health and substance use disorder clinic for several years. Um, in, the, in the Coeur d'Alene area? Yeah, yeah, in St. Mary's, actually, uh, for a FQHC there. Um, so worked with people that were struggling uh, mentally or with addiction. I um, ended up leaving just, you know, during the pandemic, it got so that the demand was much greater than we could fill. And it was really a lot of people in crisis a lot of the time. So I thought I was going to just take a break, um, work with kids, get upstream a little bit, and feel like create some buoyancy. And I still might go back to working in the mental health field, but uh, for now, I, I like what I'm doing. Now, um you and your sister both went to the University of Idaho in Moscow, right? All three of us. Which sister? Uh, and so uh, Shay was a senior, you were a freshman? That's right. We were roommates. She was a, a senior, I was a freshman. That didn't work out so good. She was like, you know, you need to be <laughs> home by 10. You got homework to do. And I was like, wait, you're not my mom. That's not but how my freshman year of college yeah. went. Did, did Jenny ever come visit you over there? Yeah, she did, and we went home every chance we got to. Okay. It was hard. Our parents were going through the divorce. Um, so myself at 18 and Shay at 21, it really felt like we left our, our little one behind. So, yeah, we went back every chance we got. You were quite close to her, right? Yes. Uh, tell the jury about uh, Jenny's mental health problem. So um, let me begin by just saying she's one of my favorite people. Um, but yeah, as probably a young adult, uh, she was diagnosed with some um, mental disabilities. She is on disability now. No objection, just a minute. Just Sustained. Well, do you know this for a fact about her, her diagnosis? And how do you know? Um, she told I, me. I could because I'm her sister and we communicate with each other and I know because she's she on disability me. now. My objection was sustained and we're just pretending it I'm wasn't. Asking what she said. Objection, objection is sustained. The, the answer is stricken and the jury should disregard the response. Go ahead, Mr. Sykes. I need to be able to explore this. Because and we're did. pretending that it wasn't. Uh, quite a bit, so. He's right, but he's so <laughs> fucking snarky about it. Oh! It's, look, even though he's right, it is just so condescending the way he does it. Your Honor, my objection was sustained, and we're pretending like it wasn't. <sighs> okay, well, let's answer some questions while we all just fluff our auras. I'm trying to do a left-handed fluff. It's not my, 
I normally need a right-handed fluff chat. There we go. Just let's uh, let's blow off the negative energy. All right. Question. Was distracted driving a law that long ago? I think so. I, th I think it's never been okay to just read a fucking novel while you are the driver. Um, I, I, I don't think that's ever been okay, but Kimberly said, same with the motion sickness. Can't even play Pogo. Um, I can't play Pogo while driving either unless I'm the passenger. And even then it makes me really motion sick. So, um, uh, sassy J woman guilty for as eight bowl of cereal. When I, I don't, I don't even feel safe eating a bowl of cereal while driving it. I would end up wearing it. I, I would. Well, thank you. S word device. I, I appreciate you. Costa Rica, Peru's zip lining in 2017 doesn't sound impaired to me. Stacy, it paints a very different picture, doesn't it? This was a shift for me with this cross-examination. Even though I don't always like the style, uh, points were made for Paltrow in this cross. Yes. Okay, would you um, <clears throat> tell the jury what your experience with mental health is? Mm -hmm. We clinic. already did what, that. What did you do there yeah. and Objection. what did you learn? Ask so and answered. We had seven counselors and um, people that came in for, um, it would be outpatient mental health services, anything from uh, depression <laughs> to anxiety to schizophrenia to where, whatever they were working on. Expert opinion she is not allowed to give. Will you approach the bench, please? Again? Oh, this is getting snappy. All right. They are going to try to clarify some of her statements with her own experience. They're not going to be able to qualify her as an expert and redirect. Um, the judge is not going to be happy pulling all of them up. It is three o'clock. Is Utah Mountain Standard Time? I don't know. Hey, hey, what time zone is Utah in? I don't know if I'm going to get an answer from any of my devices. They want to talk when I don't want them to talk. Chat, let us know. All righty. With that, let us continue on. Things I need to let you know that are happening with the 18,000 of you here. A, eventually we will bump um, other others out of the live trending. So thank you all for doing that because this is your preferred place to watch trials. Thank you. Best place to watch live trials. I appreciate it. Look at that. Look at what we've done. Yay, law nerds. Mountain Standard Time. Thank you. With that, if you want to stay in the loop with my trial coverage, which granted will be a little sporadic this trial because I didn't expect to cover this other than maybe opening and closing and Gwyneth's testimony, lawnerdalert.com will keep you in the loop. When you sign up for lawnerdalert.com, go look for the welcome email. It comes from at emilydbaker.com and go ahead and make sure that your email service knows that that's not spam. Open that email. If you don't open the welcome email, sometimes your email will think that it is it is spam. Mountain Daylight Time. That's right. We're not on Standard Time. We're MDT. We're MDT. So go ahead and do that. Second, tonight I will be streaming for our members at Law Nerds Unite only. Yes. And then I just uh, uh, requested a, an opportunity to put this on the record at some later date. I mean, some later time after the jury's gone. Okay. This does need to be All put right. on the record. I want to uh, hear it. Tell me the kind of things that Jenny. I just want to take the jury's time with the argument. Oh, yeah, we understand that. Forth, so yeah. go ahead, Mr. Yeah, Sykes. We don't want to hold them up either. Um, tell me some of the things that you uh, discussed with Jenny on the phone. And when you had meetings with her, what are some of the things you discussed with her? Are you talking about like just our, our phone calls and yeah. our catch -in? Yeah, so. Uh, particularly with respect to your dad. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw her last month. I went over to Missoula for my birthday, and we uh, took in a film festival, a documentary film festival together. So we got to visit a little bit about this upcoming trial. She was nervous. Tell me more about she that. Sounds like hearsay. Sustained as to hearsay. Well, not what she said, but just what, what you observed about her. What I observed, um, I observed that she wasn't in a great mental place mm -hmm. with us. She was strike. I think as a sister, not as an expert. Just a second. I, I want to hear the objection. 
She was not Woo! in a good mental state. That's an okay. expert opinion. That's not I expert. think she can offer a lay opinion under, under Rule 701. Thank you, Judge. Go ahead. Offer your lay opinion, please. Yeah, I was, wor <laughs> I was worried about her. I could tell that she was stressed out. She her sister. Uh, confided in me that her counselor had said, I, I Oh, that's all kinds oh, of hearsay. Okay. All right. Maybe that's multiple layers of hearsay. You talk about what you observed. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, she. Uh huh. Um, her Ooh, girl. cat Pots wasn't doing really great. She was worried about her cat. Um, I'm constantly worried about my cats. They are unhinged. She was worried about taking time to get here. And those would be communications. And that's something I can share or no? So something I observed. You you can't relay. <laughs> information that you obtained from her verbally okay you can what you saw when you were with her you can right. talk about that right but not what she told you okay oh boy i just really enjoyed my time with her as i always do okay. um, did she appear to be under a lot of stress oh good he's yeah she had some mm -hmm. yeah heaviness about her gating um <clears throat> over the years as you've heard her Talk about your dad, okay? Have her complaints and observations Pamela, always been accurate, she did. in your opinion? She did. I think her mind, she has a, a creative this is fair. way of seeing things. Um, she was an art major. She's very Oh, there was an eye roll. Visual struggles with verbal <clears throat> communication. I think of everyone in the family, I do best with almost, I don't know if I can call it translating or interpreting and drilling down to um, what she's trying to say. You're the middle There sibling. are times though when- I'm not surprised you've taken on this I one. don't wanna speak for my other sister, Shay, but I can speak for myself when I've experienced that her understanding of a situation is very different than mine. To strike that. It's, we're getting it out of a lay perspective. I think that is a, a, a lay opinion. Of, it's a, it's, I mean, it, you need to lay the foundation based on her perception. Okay. So reason, based on her reasonable perception, then it would qualify as a lay opinion. Yeah. Tell the jury <coughs> uh, what you've observed about her perceptions. Lay a foundation for us. Yeah. I mean. Lots of meetings, lots of telephone calls. You talk about oof. that. Yeah, um, yeah, well, she, we, we uh, FaceTime quite a bit. Um, like I said, she's very visual, one of my favorite people to walk with because she'll say things like, wow, stop, look at that, look at those colors together, you know? Um, she sketches a lot. Um, she has a whole My drawer other has way snacks. of seeing the world that You're sometimes right. is beautiful. That's an expert opinion. Do we have up. to keep dealing with That's this? That's a sister. Okay, oh. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. The snark. I, it's really cool when you ex can expand your way of, of understanding, right? And we're always kind of myopic. Like we see things, I see <laughs> things how I see things. And you see things how you see things. So what I appreciate about, appreciate about Jenny is that uh, she has another way of seeing things. Um, and sometimes that is really difficult. Sometimes with communication, things get uh, twisted or confused, and there's a lot of clarification that has to happen uh, Human often. communication is hard. And Can you put on the record she is not here as a mental health expert, and she is You've not done it like three mental times. Mental health expert. I think Oi. you can bring that out on cross examination. This is a this is a lay opinion. This is of redirect sister of her sister. sister. Nothing more. You asked about her sister. Uh, Nonstop uh, counsel. This See if you can finish what your thought was. is yeah, ripping what I don't you want sowed. Anyone to think that I'm an expert on anything? I what I can speak to is the fact that I have had a relationship. This is your sister with her for 40, 41 years. You know, she's kind of my first baby. She was, I was six when she was born. Um, you asked, so I can Owens asked. Just speak to that relationship and growing up with her. You Owens asked the whole time. She said she had another way of perceiving things. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I think she Let has a be. unique way of looking at the world. That's not always true. Your Honor, it's not always easy. Cool. Yeah. Just a minute. She, she can't make a credibility statement about her sister's thoughts. Sustained. Let me rephrase that. also sustained as to vagueness. Okay. 
when you said another way maybe of, just the legal grounds for the objections across, instead of the argument of proceeding or understanding they both do it you said that i did say that i now, think now what did you mean by that is my question it kind of comes back to mr owens when i sp spoke with him earlier and he was saying so are you telling the truth or is she telling the truth and i had a hard time answering that because i can speak to my own experience but i I am not in her lived experience with her, uh, who she is, and um, I, I have not lived her life and her experience. I know her to be truthful. I've never heard her lie. Um, or, so, it, it, so if she's communicating that to you, that is her understanding of the experience. Yes, right. we have had times, though, when she has saw something that I have not seen or I would portray it as differently than her. Based on your knowledge of her in the past few years, okay, and, and your knowledge of her over the years as her sister, and one who loves her, are her perceptions always accurate? They're not. Hold on one second, Judge. He's allowed to ask because counsel asked. Owens tried to get into it and is now trying to shut down the rebuttal, which you can't do. He, he asked a lot about it. Thank and you. Owens, Owens, Mr. Owens sowed those seeds, and on redirect you reap it, and now he's going to try to get into it again, and we'll see how that goes. I Phyllis, thank you for the super uh, Jenny, to be a perfectly lovely, well-spoken person. Do you? She's lovely. I would not use the words well-spoken. Did you read her 136-page hmm. deposition? Am I allowed to? Of course you are. No, I, I have not read her deposition. Well, I don't know if you are, but I didn't give it to you. I'm just wondering. Does it surprise you that question and answering were perfectly eloquent? The whole thing for for like hours and hours. I object, Your Honor. No, she, she has no foundation to answer that question, and that's just a, a personal opinion. Sustained. Thank you. Does it surprise you that Jenny could talk eloquently for hours and hours? Right under the bus. Stained, it sounds like counsel's testifying. Okay. <laughs> she has a bachelor's degree, right? Well, it's hard thought, but we got there. Yes. Don't yeah. diminish her answer. accomplishment. Yes. Oh, Polly, you're going to start pissing me off. She. It was hard uh, fought. So was mine. I mean, it sounds like I'm defending your Everything sister. Everything I've done not. in school was so hard let's, fought. Let's kind of talk about it. Okay. No, because I will. Um, yeah, it wasn't proper. Overruled. You said Jenny that was so is truthful. Yes? I've never known her to lie. Intentionally lie, no. So Huh. This is this is this is the best thing about the process of law that we have. Is she says your father violated boundaries she set for years. Would you you wouldn't you defer to her? Okay. That's beyond the scope and he's already covered that in this. Overruled. I would say that's something my sister has communicated to me. Is you said it wasn't in your earlier testimony. She really practices with my dad is healthy boundaries. And both the other sisters do too, right? Yeah. Set boundaries, yeah. and sometimes he violates them. I think True? all healthy relationships have to have boundaries. And True. yes, that that's has not, been after the accident, definitely something that I struggle that's with. That's not what he's dad. asking. Huh. This is what I love about our system. You see the difference from the direct examination to cross, to redirect, to recross, and you see how it shifts, which is she why. the truth when she believes that your dad would exaggerate Which is why you see and celebrity. this. Oof. That's beyond the scope. That's also, it's uh, a counsel. It's improper. Overruled. Um, she would be telling her truth. Oh boy. Oh boy. So this is this is why we have this process of examining people. This is the middle sister. 
so this is a this is a a shift because she's, she's not going to call her sister a liar, she says, but she is though. He's isn't deceptive. Objection. That's improper questioning. I think we covered this before, also, didn't we? That's a new word. Uh, okay, overruled. I would say she's telling her truth. Is she telling her truth when she says? Uh, oh boy. I'm having a problem finding my quote on this. I apologize. Give me one second, please. This on the stand is Polly Sanderson, the plaintiff's daughter. They are talking about her younger sister, Jenny. The younger sister is. He will estranged. get whatever monetary benefit he can in business, even so if that's it's what they're dishonest. talking about. Not true. That's not a and quote, your, but it is a summary. It's totally irrelevant. It's improper question. <laughs> Shit. I'm, I, have I, more I don't know that to be true. Again, this is Jenny's supposition. Is she telling the truth when she describes your dad as anal retentive? The doctor said that too. I'm thinking that that word came up with my older sister too because she brought up that word and I said, I don't even know what anal retentive means. Really? What does anal retentive mean? So are, if you're talking like type Jenny. A in order and details, I would say that's true. So let me make sure we refate and make sure we're on the same page. Okay. Is she telling the truth when she says he has anal retentive? Uh, he's anal retentive. Um, would, I would not call him anal retentive, no. Okay, but both your sisters did, right? Shay said that too. Do you recall? Shay said that the word anal retentive came up in her deposition, and I said it did not oh. come up in mine. So you talked about Shay's yeah. deposition. Well, I didn't make it up. Uh, Came from somewhere. Okay, anal retentive has nothing to do with our bottoms. Is that what? true? <laughs> oh, shit. Just to make sure we're talking about the same thing. I, yeah. It's got the word anal in it. I know. I don't like saying it. <laughs> Is that the definition? <laughs> this attorney's so uncomfortable I, saying anal. I'll tell you I'm what. Dying. I'm, dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I think it's obsessive, sort of. That's how I understand it. But and It is. is strange? She yeah. asked me, but I'll be quiet. <laughs> Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Those are all my questions. Thank you. What an odd afternoon in court. Ma'am, do you really not know what anal retentive means? Please just ask about so the anal retention. Oh, fucking hell. That was so awkward. That was so awkward. I don't know how she says I don't even know what anal retentive means. I, I, I don't know. Polly was so comfortable saying fuck earlier in court and it made this lawyer so uncomfortable and now... He's like stumbling over to try to not say anal retentive because clearly it doesn't feel like the language he should be using. You can see the lawyer getting very uncomfortable, which I find to be really hilarious. But it seems that Polly's perception of her father is perhaps a bit different than the other two daughters' perceptions of her father, which is fair. It almost felt in Cross that... It was more protective, and that's what they're trying to get to so that they can do it. But here's why we watch live trials, and I've seen comments come in and out throughout the day where people are like, this trial is boring by. The thing is, trials are by their nature kind of boring. I mean, it is a process of asking questions. But there are these moments that are so strange and so unscripted, and you don't know when they're going to come, and you can't. And sometimes you don't even have context for them being these moments without watching the rest of it. Live trials are so unpredictable. And so you've got Polly, who's really comfortable saying fuck. And then she's like, I don't even know what anal retentive means. What is happening? And then and then the lawyer getting all flustered over so the word anal. We're going to let we're going to you're, you're done with your questioning right now. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not done yet. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> no. no. OK, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ask her about butt stuff and see if the other lawyer will say it. I'm the one causing chaos you now. Some of Mr. Owen's last questions, that she's telling her truth. Define that for us, please. What does that mean? I think human beings move through the world, and we have our own understanding and experience of things. Um, I think there's 
a neurodiversity that exists in this world and there are different ways of understanding and experience. Um, yeah, time like is I a said, construct. I don't know Jenny to be untruthful. I think Chat, you're killing me. she sees I I love you. in a curious, different <laughs> way. But that's not your truth. No, it's not my experience. Those are not my experiences. All of us have different lived experiences. Would she get it wrong that she didn't talk to her dad for 13 but stuff. years? I believe that is wrong. It is beyond the scope. Overruled. Oh, I disagree with that. It was beyond the scope. So, you think she can be wrong? Yeah, that sounds wrong to me, but from my knowledge and understanding. So, if you want to clarify, you're saying that after she moved out, she never saw my dad for 13 years? Uh, we'll defer to her testimony, but whatever okay. she said. Okay. <laughs> To ask you one question. That, 2017. Jesus, that witness just shut your him dad down. Dad broke up with um, Robin. Robin Dale, right? How many yeah. read? And uh, it is over to, overruled. Go ahead and. She went to Europe. He took Jenny to Europe with him, didn't he? That's correct. Did they have a good time? No, it was miserable. Miserable. <laughs> I think at some point she sent me footage yeah. where the bearing had gone out on my dad's wheelie suitcase. And it was just an hour and a half of him like spinning the wheel, trying to figure it out. And when I said, "How are things going?" Couldn't fix that post accident, huh? No. Your Honor, I'm gonna put this on the record because oh, I think I misspoke. Uh, with Jenny, you said that you and your father didn't speak for 13 years after you graduated from high school. We spoke. Your Honor, I, I object to this. I'm correcting my error. Because well, well, I spoke in error. It says we spoke. It was just distant. Right. So I, I misspoke. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you can step down. Um, oh, you're thank you. are still under subpoena. And so you need to uh, be available for any further t for testimony perhaps later in the case. Thank you. Well, uh, I guess I'm extending it by order right now then. Okay. Thank you. Chat, we've made it. Let's see who the next witness is. Are they going to call the plaintiff next? Um, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. I was just reminded. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Gresham. Polly? Uh, you're still under the witness rule, meaning that you can't watch the proceedings, you can't sit in here, and you can't talk to other witnesses about the case. Thank you. Mr. Sykes? Who's our well, next witness? Uh, plaintiff? Sure. Sure. More learned counsel. Just a minute. Oh, he's conferring with his learned friends. Look at how many of them there are. One, two, three, four. There's five plaintiff's counsels. That's so many. It is 327. They're strategizing how to best use the rest of their day. And they're strategizing what witness to call next. When they gave their witness list at the end of the day yesterday, they said they or they thought they were going to be calling the plaintiff this afternoon. Let's see if that's who they call. And they said they were going to be calling Gwyneth tomorrow. Your Honor, we're going to call Richard Bain, uh, medical doctor from Florida. Bain okay. or By Bain? video because he had a wedding and could not come to the That's the trial. more information than we need. So, <laughs> no, we're ready to go. But I mean, the jury might want a short break. Uh, I, I five or seven minutes, something like that, I mean, whatever. I think we're okay if okay. we. Right? It's only been about. It's been less than thirty minutes. Yeah, it. We we're all good, counsel. Thank you. Let's mount up and ride. Video dep video testimony. This is not a pre-recorded deposition. And counsel, deposition. for the record, would you spell that witness's name? This is by video. And that's okay. a that's an MD. Biomedical engineer. Is right. he board Thank certified? <laughs> All right. This evening we will be doing a members only Q and A with um, with Dr. B. That will be over at LawNerdsUnite.com on our Patreon. So if you are members there, I will put the link up after I am done streaming here. I just saw Runkle pop in. Hello, Runkle. The court reporter is Rossanne Morgan. We represent Depo Max Merit, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, it's a depot. It is a depot. Wow! Ah! Ah! Is the green screen? 12, 11, what the? F um, PM Mountain Time. Oh gosh! Uh, March thirteenth, twenty twenty-three. 
I didn't. This is the case of Terry I, Sanderson that's, versus Gwyneth Paltrow. Case oh, number one. That's not what I. That's not what I signed up for. Zero, 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 oh, don't call him Voldemort. In Emily, the third don't judicial call him district Voldemort. court, don't call him Voldemort. Summit don't County, call him Voldemort. State of Utah. Damn Council it. will now introduce themselves, and the court reporter will swear in the witness. I can't. Lawrence Bueller for I'm plaintiff sorry. Terry Sanderson. I can't. James Egan for Gwyneth Paltrow, the defendant. With me is also Robert this is a, Sykes. This is a very qualified doctor. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know, just myself, if I can ever get this thing turned on. Okay, uh, Robert Sykes, also counsel for the plaintiff. Yes. Doctor, can you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the uh, testimony you're about to give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing doctor, but the truth to help you God? Your, your do, white Adam, balance please. is Thank not correct. Thank you. Go ahead, counsel. Thank you. Sir? Uh, Dr. Bain, could you uh, state your name and spell it for the record, please? Certainly. My name is Richard Bain, and that is spelled B-O-E-H-M-E. Okay. Wait, Bain? And I'd like to just like get the some villain? Uh, background and educational information. So He does have uh, a Stanley Tucci born? vibe. I spell Alabama. And uh, where did you grow up? I spell Alabama. Huntsville's delightful. And uh, next, I'd like to hear about your education, starting with high school and then through universities, undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate school. Thank you. I graduated from high school in Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, went into the Navy. I graduated with honors with a Bachelor's of Science in Aerospace Engineering from the U.S. Naval Academy. I did my postgraduate work in nuclear engineering, and I served on board a number of nuclear submarines in the U.S. Navy as a nuclear trained engineering officer. <laughs> what just happened? Um. Any way we can turn it up, I would love. What just happened? During the application process in the U.S. Navy as a nuclear Doctor, trained engineering Dr. officer. Dr. Dockward. Dr. I resigned my commission to apply and go to medical school. During the application yeah, his process, camera's balance is not great. Aerospace the green screen is not helpful. Star Wars project back in the 1980s. Wait, not the movies. I matriculated into medical school at the University of Alabama School of Medicine. I wonder if people are going to green screen him While into the there, Hogwarts I took a leave castle. Of to complete my PhD in biomedical engineering, and after I was conferred the PhD, I went back and completed the MD. And after I was conferred the MD degree, I went back on active duty in the Navy. And I, I don't understand conducted the my screen. internship in the general surgery and my residency training in neurology at Bethesda Naval Hospital located outside of Washington, D.C. While I was in the Washington, D.C. area, I worked at the Naval Industry Research Laboratory. I taught the postdocs until my retirement in 2005. I became board certified in adult neurology and I completed fellowship training in. Sir, thank you for your service and you're very state. qualified, but it's late uh, in the day. I currently have a. And the green screen's killing us. In neurology we apologize in for being Jacksonville children. Beach and, uh, you're imminently that's qualified, about it, guys. it seems. That's okay. about it, guys. Can you explain your education more specifically in neurology and biomedical engineering? Uh, sure. <laughs> Neurology like, is a subspecialty in medicine where the like, physician how much you want me to tell you? deals with patients that have disorders of the central, peripheral, and autonomic nervous systems. A biomedical engineer, well, the biomedical engineering field is a very broad field that uh, brings the disciplines of medicine and engineering together. It ranges from genetic research to um, the design and implementation of artificial limbs and joints, monitoring equipment in the uh, hospital, heart lung machines, uh, materials used for artificial limbs, teeth, these types of things. My particular specialty within the field of biomedical engineering is the study of complex fluid flow and the study of externally applied force application. You. That was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, doctor. I just missed that last part. Uh, the, the, the study of externally applied force application to the human. 
got it to the human. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, kid Sorry. things. Uh, now I'd like to move on to training uh, as a neurologist. Uh, how many years have you been practicing as a neurologist and uh, training in neurology? Over 30 years. And what about uh, how many years as a biomedical engineer? I would say about the same period of time. I did that work in the Navy starting on or about 1989. So I guess that would qualify as eight, 30 years. Uh, can you describe your hospital and clinical work? Uh, sure. I have hospital privileges at the St. Vincent's and Baptist Health Systems here in Jacksonville, Florida, which comprises uh, five different hospitals. And then I have an out, primarily an outpatient clinic in neurology, and I see patients five days a week, Monday through Friday. Chat, y'all. I'm trying to not be distracted, uh, but I am. patients comprise primarily of headache patients, trauma patients, patients with stroke, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. I want to know what kind of camera he's on. Can we back the camera up just a, just a little bit? Just so, a little bit more, um, just a little that's more space. What I deal with on a daily basis. Oh, somebody's absolutely going to make him into Max Headroom. How many times have you testified in court as an expert witness? Uh, the limit does not exist. A lot. I would say <laughs> over, well, in the private sector, it's over 100 times. The limit does uh, not exist. The, the limit does not exist. Testify on behalf of the government, i.e. the Navy, um, at different uh, tribunals and that type of stuff. And I, I don't know the number of that. Probably less than 50. Uh, are you compensated for your time as you prepare and for and testify in court? Strange to me. Yes, I am. Why are we whispering questions? What types of cases uh, in the private sector do you testify? Well, I uh, get involved in uh, what we refer to as personal injury cases, i.e. patients that have some type of medical malady as a result of an externally applied force application. A medical malady body. as a result of externally applied force is the most doctor way to say that shit ever. An injury due to a fall. Okay. Uh, does that include uh, head trauma? Uh, yes, it does. And also, to be complete, every so often now that I'm retired from the Navy, I do get a government page from time to time. I would say maybe once per year. Okay. I'd like to move to your professional specialties and interests. Other than what you've described, are there any other things like patients or uh, brain injuries in general or concussion victims that uh, uh, you have specialties or interests in? Well, I see patients that have uh, closed head trauma, you know, that have uh, concussion, concussion symptoms ongoing, if you will. Uh, so I hope that answered your question. And that is uh, how it's done by a neurologist, correct? Oh, well, yes. I mean, some uh, some uh, neurologists uh, uh, elect to specialize their clinic in certain disorders, uh, if you will. But uh, I don't. I'm more of a general neurologist. So in addition. To the trauma patients, I see the other patients that I've already described. Okay. Um, what about your uh, professional specialties in uh, biomedical engineering? Anything else that uh, you can tell us? Well, I did that work in the Navy, and then when I came into the private sector, I got involved in in the three types of cases. Well, actually, the two: personal injury and product liability. Medical malpractice deals with just neurology, but uh, product liability cases, i.e., if uh, if a particular medical device fails for some reason, then I get called in to uh, assess why it did that, if it in fact did do that, if you will, and then of course the personal injury aspect of it. This would be one of those types of cases. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, you mentioned uh, personal injury. That would include closed head brain injury? Yes, and you know, spinal cord injuries, these types of things. Other 
anything that involves the nervous system, and keep in mind that we have nerves that go to all parts of our body. What is a closed head brain injury? Well, closed head injury just means that the I want him to pick up a brain by force to the head did not open up the head, i.e. you don't have an open, open skull fracture or anything like that. An example of an open head injury would be like a gunshot wound to the head. That would be an example of that. Um, is that the same as a TBI or traumatic brain injury? Well, closed head trauma just describes an externally applied force application to the head. Now, what it does to the brain, if you have any type of dysfunction of brain activity after the force application, we refer to that as a traumatic brain injury. What is an MTBI? M just means mild, mild traumatic brain injury. And what about post-concussive syndrome? Post-concussion concussion syndrome is just a description the, of the whispering is weird. a group of symptoms that make up a syndrome. Post-concussion implies that there's been some type of externally applied force application to the head that results in some type of brain dysfunction. And in classic terms, a post-concussion or a concussion is, in fact, a mild traumatic brain injury. However, you need to qualify that whether or not the concussion is permanent or not. Most concussions, most people that have concussive-like symptomatology from a blow to the head, the most common of which is a headache, will resolve quickly over time. And the trauma literature is pretty specific in this description. 95% of people that have a closed head injury that have concussive symptomatology resulting from that will return back to their baseline normal within one year, 95% of the time. So that still leaves 5% of those that don't. Yeah, Laura, we so might live here the rest of the day today. Whether or not the concussion they might not play or the, the whole concussive thing. symptomatology is permanent or not no we can't we can't fast forward I'm okay sorry. regarding the We're live group that does not recover within a year what are the problems that typically persist and well, they didn't move that, their volume down so we keep can't in mind see. that your brain is your whole being so you can have any type of symptoms objection my brain is brain multiple function. beings at any given moment Keep in mind that the study or the field of neurology was learned stroke by stroke. So to give you some examples, if you lost eyesight as a result of a blow to the head, that would be a brain injury because you lost your eyesight. You can have paralysis. You can have double vision. You can have vertigo or imbalance. You can have hearing loss. You can have disorders of mentation such as memory loss, intermittent confusion. The most common symptom after a blow to the head Deborah, now's a good time to, a to mentally take a little break so for a snack. So people will describe stretch. different types of headache syndrome this is, as a result of blow to um, the head. A recorded deposition. Okay. Um, in your career, about how many adults of Terry's age have you treated or evaluated for brain injury? Terry was 69 at the time. Well, I, I don't keep track of that data. It's been uh, quite a few, I would imagine, over, over time. Our neurology group was the group that provided neurological services to our professional football team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, for a couple of years. So in the younger population we saw it all the time but in that football. particular age group it's going to be less common uh because the prevalence of closed head injury in, in elderly individuals is less with the exception of that patients your that skull? have parkinson's disease breaks people with parkinson's disease lose their ability to uh, control their center of gravity so they have a tendency to fall 
and also they have a tendency of not being able to protect themselves when they fall, i.e. put their hands in front of their face. So we see a disproportionate amount of patients that have Parkinson's disease that end up falling, striking their head on the ground, and then having uh, any varying degree of brain injury as, a, as it relates to that. Actually, I agree. He's explaining it very well. The green actually hurts my um, eyes. We've asked you to review the case of plaintiff Terry Sanderson. Or M. Lotz. Uh, I'd like you to explain uh, what you have reviewed and relied on in this case. Um, for example, uh, did you meet with uh, This is Mr. recorded Sanderson? on 3 yes, 2023 Yes, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Sanderson in my office on April 28th, 2021. And what was the primary reason you were asked, or you asked to see Mr. Sanderson? Well, whenever I get involved in these types of matters, I insist on seeing the patient for two reasons. To get there, keep in mind that the patient is the repository of all information in which uh, a healthcare provider is going to come up with a medical differential diagnosis and ultimately a final diagnosis. So you got the source in front, in front of you, but also I had the medical record. So I was able to corroborate the medical record with Mr. Sanderson and then get his uh, description of the events leading to his condition. And then of course I performed a uh, physical examination on him as well. Okay. Um, what were the medical records, as you recall, that you reviewed in this case? Uh, they said I Terry was going to testify here, today. I don't uh, think they'll get to it. To Just looking at the time, it's uh, 3.45. I have the uh, incident report from the actual event. So from 3.45 uh, to 5, I don't think this video is going to be done. Care. That's He's like an urgent from care Huntsville. Facility. I have the uh, VA medical records. That feels cool. I really enjoy it. I have it. Uh, imaging. I've done there last year. You know, X-rays and a CT scan. Then I have Dr. Goldstein. This is their uh, third records. medical have, expert. Uh, it's a lot of Dr. medical experts. Dr. Wendell's records or Dr. Wendell Gibby's records. That is, uh, Dr. Alana. MB. I think that's fair. Bond records, and then I have numerous. Uh, deposition uh, transcripts. He's in Florida now, but he's and from Huntsville, went to school in Huntsville, Mr. then went to D.C. and is now in Florida. Ms. Gratian, uh, Gratian, Sanderson, so Arad, we're talking about where he is from, Davidson, Huntsville, and Smith. And then I have deposition testimony from uh, Mr. Sanderson, a Ms. Paltrow, and Eric Christensen, Sam Goldstein, and Dr. Palm. And so that, those are the uh, materials that I reviewed. Wait, there's a Huntsville in Ontario? I didn't know that. Oh, what do you recall about uh, Miss Carlene Davidson, the uh, former girlfriend of Terry Sanderson? Well, that there was a significant change fun, we in had Mr. Fun. Sanderson as it relates to the incident uh, back in 2016. Uh, some of these depositions or these witnesses, uh, we call them uh, before and after witnesses. Is that, is that your understanding? Yes, it is. Uh, what is the significance to you of the before and after this witnesses is a deposition? that are uh, that you so reviewed in this case? All the attorneys are present. Well, there is a type it's of just over video, so you cross-examine it when it's being done in March. That may not give so us we'll hear the cross-examination later. Or inconsistent history <laughs> and may not have insight into their own problems. And oh, the the in-court microphones aren't like muted. That's part of the issue. Of and so we're hearing the council so talking at council table a little bit. The healthcare provider has to rely upon That's the whispering I think we're picking up. History I, from close observers uh, like a family member, a spouse, a co-worker to get the history. This is one of the problems that we have as neurologists, especially with patients that were initially evaluating for Alzheimer's dementia. It is almost universal 
that it is a loved one or a close associate that brings that patient in for evaluation. Or the screen the is actually starting to hurt my eyes. So if you see me not looking at the screen, that's why. That are seen by others. So witnesses can be exceedingly helpful in obtaining historical information on a patient. Uh, does doctor or does Terry Sanderson have Alzheimer's or dementia in your opinion? Ooh, good question. No. Good question. I want to hear more about that. Uh, Ask what more is about the importance that. of uh, uh, the, some of these before and after witnesses whose depositions you, you reviewed uh, to your understanding of the problems? Uh, well, if you, if you have an, a situation where there is brain dysfunction from a specific event, that i.e. there's a stepwise uh, decline in functioning and it doesn't have to, you know, it's any type of functioning. The, the close observer is going to be in a position to be able to relate the change or the magnitude of the change in the symptoms in the patient at hand, whereas the patient may not be able to express those changes to the healthcare provider. So before and after witnesses can be exceedingly helpful in those types of cases. And you understand Terry Sanderson was uh, involved in a ski crash. Today's snacks correct? are That's pretzel correct. thins and So uh, do crackers. you recall reviewing uh, records by and the deposition of uh, Whitney Smith, a ski patroller at Deer Valley? Yes, I do. <sighs> the green is just... Uh, we'll get to that later. I'd just like to go through the list of things that you reviewed. Like, it hurts my eyes in uh, my eye, like, in my eyes, if that makes sense. This is... Final, uh, Sir, uh, next, can we uh, go with a nice, calming, like, blue... Did you review some of the uh, the white balance is reports, just the reports that were produced brutal. by uh, the defendant, Gwyneth Paltrow? I did see some correspondence relating to those reports, yes, and I reviewed them. Okay. Now I'm going to so share my screen. So for all of you that are like, I can't, I get it. And show you the deer, uh, it's uh, plaintiff's trial exhibit one. He's just very give me smart. A second. The white balance is just absolutely devastating. And this is oh, the uh, Deer Valley Resort Company incident report form. Do you see that at the top? Yes, I do. The contrast is, and it's is part of it. dated uh, February 26th, 2016. You see that too. Yes, I do. Uh, you also, do you also see that it indicates um, the incident or the time was uh, 12 o'clock? I assume. I really noon wish they because, would have redacted yes, some of this, uh, but I'm not familiar with what nights can we here. do? It, there is night skiing, but not at Deer Valley, I don't believe, and um, not that late. And it involves Terry Sanderson. And um, I'm just going to highlight a few things. Oh, well, it's not letting me highlight. Let's see if I can highlight it. Says it says was hit from behind. Whoops. There it is. Now it is. Do you see that uh, blue highlight? Yes, I do. Um, it says it's under uh, insured's description of the incident, correct? Yes. What And what does it say? I think it says injured. It was hit from behind. Okay, I'm going it to go say to was page two behind. of exhibit one. And do you see under, uh, next to the question, what did you do? Um, I'm, I'm going to try to highlight it, um, but uh, uh, can you read that for the record, please? Certainly. Um, he was assessed to have a mild disorientation and rib pain on the right side, and then he was transported via toboggan to the... So they assessed uh, him on the hill as the having mild disorientation. Facility, what do they and mean by mild? On reassessment... Well, I'm sure we'll hear from those witnesses. Okay. I'm just going to... Uh, register an objection to the degree that that did not 
uh, read uh, into the record exactly what is written in that answer. Okay. Um, yeah, as, uh, what is the, uh, why is that, uh, uh, what we just reviewed in this exhibit one, uh, why is it important? Um, does it confirm head trauma and broken ribs, you believe, for example? Well, the clinical description of rib pain certainly is consistent. This incident with report seems to be from right him side, seeking which treatment. Was later determined. And the disorientation. Oh, no, this is from the uh, Hill. Tells me that he did not have uh, two different people making incident reports. Interaction with this environment. So there is an element of loss of consciousness involved here. And what is the significance of loss of consciousness? Well, a loss of consciousness is certainly a dysfunction of the brain. I mean, obviously, people don't aren't on a ski slope unconscious unless something happens to them. So this is certainly an aberrancy of brain uh, function. Okay. Uh, just to go through the exhibits uh, at the beginning instead of later, I'm, I'm going to go through uh, another exhibit. Uh, this will be plaintiff's trial exhibit number four. I might have to just make it a little and, bit smaller uh, for a minute to give all of you the ease. You can hear and see him. Oh, now we're back. When we're back to documents, I'll pull those you up see a little this, more. Uh, These are progress four. notes. They're yes, impossible to read for me. They're okay, very uh, blurry, you, and the white balance uh, is. I wouldn't mind uh, looking at that, and uh, in particular, uh, uh, the this poor man is trying to read them while doing this deposition. Uh, in blue. States he lost consciousness and ski patrol responded. Okay. Uh, what is the significance of uh, this report, which apparently Chad, occurred we are, the same day we are as once the again uh, ski the crash? Trial stream to on you. live trending. In, as so an thank expert? you. Well, it's just documenting what happened. To him. So he had you know getting time. beaten out by soccer, but and video games. Mm -hmm. But the top trial stream on live trending. So thank you all. Ha <laughs> ha. The law nerds. The law nerds have done it. Again, like I said, I'm just going through these to. You uh, can go look for yourself if you're ever curious. Make sure you're familiar with them because I'd like to Under discuss what live they now. mean to your opinions or to to uh, form your opinions. It's weird to listen to the whis the whispering in court. Next, I'm going to show you trial exhibit five. He does a look. He does look a little like Adam Aldman. Oh boy, that case should play. Uh, do you see this? Uh, These are progress notes from you, August seventeenth, twenty sixteen. Please describe of it. Of Terry Sanderson. It's a progress note, and uh, from the I'm, emergency department. I really wish they would have redacted the some of this. February twenty seventh. This is a streamed trial. Um, and then uh, the his I'm making this small because they didn't redact it, and I think it's harder to read. Yesterday with positive mm. LOC, which means loss of consciousness for approximately five minutes. He states he has a slight headache today and being more irritable. And states he's loss of consciousness of right five minutes. Rip pain that is worse with inspiration. Oh, that was the printed date, breathing, August 17th. And he denies any neck pain. See accident yesterday with positive. LOC, loss okay, of consciousness, again, uh, five minutes. Why is this record important to your opinions? State slight headache well, today. It's more irritable. With what happened with them yesterday. Rip and pain. he still has the right, you know, the, the Denies rib pain. neck pain. So uh, um, it's just consistent with the history that was previously uh, given. <sighs> yeah, I, I really do wish they would have thought through redacting them. I might be um, I might be oversensitive to it just because I was a district attorney, so redacting things was like a huge and central part of what I did. 
but I think when you have medical records, they are going to include going through, things like uh, uh, personal identifying information. And so once that kind of personal identifying information is off the screen, I'll make it a little bit Is there bit anything about this record bigger. that you think is uh, important But this trial is going to be televised, so these are now today. court records. They don't oh, need the it history. once his name's on it. They don't Judge, need that uh, other PII in there. Maybe having trouble seeing that. And I wonder if we could have permission to have them move up to the front or something so they can see it if they want. Because it is a little bit small. Are any members of the jury having a difficult time reading the, the exhibit? Or any of the exhibits? Give them if the you exhibit are, later. Please, you know, you can move to these closer chairs, or you can certainly walk around front. Feel free to do that. Stephanie, okay. thank you. Yes, we are right. on live trending. We are the high, We are the top uh, stream watching the trial. So thank you. Um, and, uh, above all of the networks. Which is why I bring it up. Because and, we're just creating our own thing here. Finally, I'm going to show you Exhibit Waha. 7. Lonard's takeover. Which is the uh, last exhibit we'll show right now. And uh, these are from February 29th, 2016. Uh, can you describe this exhibit seven? From the it's nurses. A, uh, progress note. Uh, this from is from primary February care preventative. Oh, no. 2016. Location title, primary care preventative. Standard title, preventative medicine outpatient note. Uh, where I've highlighted. Okay. Um, oh, yes. We are doing um, the things here because of oh, wait, you. Not the, uh, that's too much. <laughs> it's all too much. Way. The green is too much. Truly. Okay, uh, the part that's highlighted, uh, what is the significance of that? Once again, is the historic history. Mr. Sanderson did comment on his injuries sustained on the 26th where he had loss of consciousness after a skier impact, and he has been experiencing foggy feeling along with mood change. Okay, I believe this record, well. Um, I don't trust their scrolling. I don't trust their scrolling. Um, also, the green is giving everyone a headache, so I'm sorry that you have to see my face more. No, I'm not. Hi. <laughs> I may have to return to one of the other exhibits. Um, I think it's exhibit... Sussex Sandra had changed her mind. Five. I've decided I don't like Polly. Her sweetness veneer is slipping That's the more the she talks one. about her sister Jenny. No love list. It, it. We went on a whole roller coaster during Polly's testimony, didn't we? Just joined. Why is this a line of questioning? Oh, we got, we got to that earlier, BB. I'm sure the chat answered. And in particular, I'd like you to look at the uh, um, page four of exhibit five. And uh, are you able to see this uh, record? Yes, I am. It's a radiology report. Yes. Can you explain the significance of this record? Fractures of the right fourth through seventh well, lateral ribs. Injury are better seen on, on right a dedicated rib chest, series. No pneumothorax, pain, which is an injury to the lung. And increased pain when he was breathing. And basically it shows oh, under impression, acute fractures of the right fourth through seventh lateral ribs. Lungs rib are otherwise clear. With minimal displacement. No pleural effusions. And sixth ribs. Pleural so, vessels. Does this mean he broke four ribs in the ski crash? You called a radiologist. Yes, uh, Broncos country. I have two. Okay. I have two. I have two new sound toys. I have an instant audience. Um. <laughs> which I might need to, to make more okay. use of. Let's take a short break and then we'll come back for the last session. We also have a chicken one. So there's there is that. Um, apologies. No, that I don't know. I don't know what's happening with that one. It looks like we're taking the afternoon break. 
And, oh, with that, as the judge is releasing the jury to take an afternoon break, you know what we do. I don't know why they killed the volume. He's scheduling with the lawyers. Don't kill the volume that early. There's an hour left on this video? Actually, there's another. I assume there are no objections to rule. There's an, actually, there, there is another piece to this. Okay. Well, if the objection wasn't made, it's was waived, right? It's trial. Right. Yeah, I, I, we've well, already said, said we, that. We've already said we can watch the whole thing. Oh, God. There's another hour of that video. Um. Okay. There's another hour. That means this is going to be the end of the day today. This video is it for today. Chat. We might have to we might have to answer some questions and give this one up a little bit. Because I do have a stream with Dr. B tonight. If you go to Law Nerds Unite, you can join that stream tonight. There is still time. That link will be up in a little bit when I'm done streaming here. Um, Paisley said, is it still Thursday? I think so, but I'm not sure. We've had a very busy day here today. I'm very interested to see what happens um, later today. If if we do not finish out the day, which is a real possibility here with this video deposition, but if we do not finish out the day today, we I will keep you posted at lawnerdsunite.com, at Law Nerd Alert as well. Law Nerd Alert is the free email at what time and if we are streaming tomorrow. If they get to the plaintiff tomorrow, I will stream it. It's going to take some rearranging of stuff that I already have scheduled. So we're just going to have to wait till the end of the day to see what their schedule is tomorrow. If the plaintiff is their first witness tomorrow and then Gwyneth Paltrow is their second, then we are going to be here all of the diggity day tomorrow. Um, so we will see. That's just going to depend on on the ordering of the witnesses as they tell us at the end of court today. They've been really good about that, um, letting us know. Dawn, thank you for such a sweet super chat. EDB, you inspire me to go back to school, or you inspired me to go back to school and finish my BS in history while I graduated this week. There are not enough words to thank you for building this community and leading us by example. This is the best community. We are such, the Lawnards are such a fantastic bunch, and that's y'all. Yes, I help set the guidelines, and yes, I help um, ask the mods to maintain our rules and our boundaries as a streamer and the kind of things that we accept in the chat because we can have fun and still be kind, and we can have diverse opinions and still have conversations. We can have differences of opinions and still talk, and it's really important because that gets lost so many places in society right now, and there is a way to respectfully disagree. Um, as my friend Rick Hoke says, reasonable minds can differ. And there's a way to have compassionate conversations with one another. And that is really important stuff. And I appreciate all of you because it's not just me. It's y'all. Like the law nerds don't exist without the law nerds. And y'all adhere to that too and look for that too. It's real easy to join in with negativity. It's real easy to lean that way. It takes a bit more energy and um, compassion to lean into being a kind, forward-facing community. So thank all of you and congratulations. Um, Daphne said, I love your commentary for trials. I can't watch one without you now. Th this is the problem that we have created. <laughs> this is the problem that we have created. Um, Hush Piper said, I feel, is it Hush Piper or is it just Hush Piper? I feel for Polly TBH trying to shield her sister's POV while being honest that it doesn't match her own and translating for neurodivergent family been there. She very much had the middle child balance going on during her testimony. Rachel said, I very much dislike how Polly seemed to discount Jenny. I didn't like the way she discounted the accomplishment of graduating like, oh yeah, she got her she got her bachelor's, but it was hard fought. So the fuck was mine. School wasn't easy for me either. It was hard fought. I don't think that makes it less. It felt less than right. Um, so it just, it felt less than, I don't know what that banging is. I hear noise. I don't know where they're coming from. Um, it's too late, Emily. All I see is Lord Voldemort. The second he came on the screen, I couldn't control my world. 
Um, just BKZ. I can't, I can't even try. It's late. And at the end of the day, the super chat is paying someone. We'll add him in Sky Captain. <laughs> is praying someone will add him into Sky Captain and World of Tomorrow. Um, Mom, we have Voldemort at home. <laughs> It's just Emily. I see Uncle Fester from the Adams family. Um, Uncle Fester, Jean Luc Picard, and Voldemort. A lot of Stanley Tucci's. I need a triumphant goat scream. I finished folding the laundry. Lisa B. <laughs> Hold on. Lisa B. Good job. Good job. You got the laundry folded. That shit can be hard. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> oh, I have to decide what what whiskey I'm having this evening because it's going to be needed. Um, Greek fairy said, or geek fairy said, this gentleman is a Bama vampire and you can't convince me otherwise roll tide. <laughs> it's a, it's a very, it's a very interesting thing. I can't unsee like true blood with that. Bella said, is it just me or is her lawyer a bit condescending? Oh, it's not you. And it's not a bit. Paltrow's lawyer feels a lot condescending to me and it like pulled Oh, that was the court noise. It like pulled condescension in. Turning nightlight on your computer helps a bit with the painfulness. I might have to do that. And let's see if I can do that now and just put us in night mode. Um, are we already in night mode? We might already be in night mode. So let me let me see if I can. Um, hey Siri, turn on night mode. Night shift is on. It's our, all right, perfect. We definitely night shifted the computer. All right, the color is going to get a little skewed for all of you, but hopefully it'll be better when we resume for this. Can't stop looking at the doctor's flipped out nose, nose pad on his glasses. Oh, every time he pushes them, it goes back in. I didn't even see that. Melanie said, I wish you were my daughter. I could listen to you all day, every day. And so appreciate your humor and intelligence. Ah, but then you would have had to deal with my shit and it would not be the same. <laughs> Jen said, check DM, IG, or Twitter email for me. I will go check. Uh, Emily, I'm curious to know if any of your trials were this dry. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I definitely had trials that were dry. I definitely had trials that were dry. So I did. Z asked, will the stream be video or audio only? Video. It's a video um, AMA. I see Runkle in the chat. Hello, Runkle. It's good to see you. Um, okay. I am also coordinating my kiddo doing the things. So are we moving to Utah? No, we are on a layover. I had intended that the next place we would be going is New Mexico. And there's updates in that too. New Mexico was our next destination for a two week preliminary hearing in May. That was our next destination. If that changes, then it might be Idaho. We're on like a, we're on a stopover. We're on like a, a brief layover. We're not moving in. Maybe we have an Airbnb where that's where we are. That's where we are. I'm sorry if I put all of your, I didn't mean to put all of your devices into night mode. I appreciate it. I apologize. When she only visited him, knew nothing of medical history. And that was really the point of counsel going on and on and on about his medical history. She's like, no, he was healthy. He's like, um, he had pancreatic cancer and this and this and that. Is that your definition of healthy? This happens in criminal trials too. It's like, I didn't know this person to be somebody who could do this. Oh, well, did you know they did this? And did you know they did this? And did you know they did that? I mean, how much do you really know about what they did? So this is an eight day trial. It seems the judge is going to be pretty strict with that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, he, the attorney said today, we only have four days left. So I've been asked a lot about this. I don't know. I don't know what I will do. I feel like our flight has been delayed. What's in New Mexico? Rust preliminary hearing, a two week preliminary hearing. It's going to feel like a trial for Rust. So we're just kind of, we are, we're on a road trip this year. Don't worry, we'll have t shirts at the end. The judge is back. The jury's on their way. The jury's yes. on their way. I like the bow tie, Your Honor. So the color is going to be a little skewed because I did put it in night mode so that my eyes would stop feeling like they so were the going to. So the jury's agreed. Fall out of my head. The jury's agreed to stay late to finish this. Oh, fuck. According to the bailiff. It's the whole thing is about two minutes, two hours and 19 minutes. Yeah, and there, so there is another uh, part of this video. Uh, if they could stay, the never mind then, we'll just stop at five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but I think they would be a little surprised. <laughs> yeah, I, I misspoke earlier because I, I was just going to miss I was also. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 
I broke up and we took a break for the last two or three, four or three. I mean, we don't have to go without any cross, but. <laughs> this is where they're going to resume in the morning. We wouldn't oh, mind. <laughs> the thumbs down was a moment. So there's two hours and 19 minutes of this testimony. For tomorrow. Oh. Are we doing this now? Let's do this now. Go ahead. Uh, Kelsey, we are working Shay, on that. Shay Harris. Mark. Mark Harris. Yes. Uh, Terry Sanderson. Yes. And Gwyneth Paltrow at this time. Okay. <coughs> so Terry first before Gwyneth. I want to put you on the witness stand and ask you a few questions about uh, shady trial tactics. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, these lawyers. Is this even real court? I want to put you on the stand, he said. I want to put you on the stand and ask you some questions about shady trial tactics. Holy shit. I don't think Gwyneth's going to testify tomorrow. Um, oh my God, these attorneys. All right, thank you. Thank you, members of the jury. And, so and, I heard uh, I him I say, had, Shay. Uh, the bailiff talked to you about timing, and, and the, the lawyers Terry, have informed me that we were all wrong about this, and, and it's going to take a little longer, so we will break at five or a few minutes after. He is just a snarky today. guy. So thank you. Yeah, the judge was like, you may whatever. proceed, counsel. I need to go back and listen. There were okay, four. I'm going to go back to that exhibit five. Sorry, I Mark somebody. Oh, that's right. Shay, Mark, Terry, Gwyneth. So we'll see the other and then the rest there's of this video. So if there's an hour left in this video, I might that? start an hour late yeah, tomorrow. Another, another radiology report. Um, Can you tell us what that means to you? And start with it's Shay. It's a radiology report of the CT scan. So we might start a little late tomorrow so I can contract. still accommodate my commitments. And then we'll get to the and, sisters. Uh, my computer's in night mode. I don't know if it transmits uh, it in night mode to y'all. What are the findings that you see? I don't know if it overlays it. I'm here well, for it. The, uh, yeah, Shay, the daughter, the and I think her husband as well. There was a prominent ventricular system enlargement with associated atrophy or shrinkage of the brain, if you will. Not the shrinkage. We've gone from and, anal to uh, shrinkage today. I don't know what's happening. I'm teasing. No My brain is tired. Hemorrhage or a brain bleed on the CT scan since he was experiencing. So we've made it not as bright. Good. Uh, consistent with the concussion. Good. So good, obviously good, good, you want good, to rule good. out some type of uh, abnormal finding within the brain. You do that with in not an setting, necessarily you do that with, a with CT Paltrow. Scan, I think we'll see Paltrow here. Monday. So um, basically, from a traumatic standpoint, there was no Jenny was always a witness for the defense. Or, we will see uh, what happens with that. We're not there yet. When you say emergent, that means emergency. Two speed would be good. Yes, I mean uh, most emergency Chat, rooms I have to are run, equipped I have with to a run CT scan for human for needs. that reason to look I will for be right fracture back. and hemorrhage. So, um, if you really need something more than that, like an MRI of a particular anatomical structure, then usually that's scheduled on an outpatient basis. Uh, down below under impression, number two, it says, uh, I'll let you read it. Um, oops, I'm going to try to highlight this. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Um, in your own words, can you explain what this means? Well, the prominent ventricular system, discordant with mild biome loss, suggests an anatomical finding of NPH, which stands for normal pressure hydrocephalus. And it says in the appropriate clinical setting. So you have to clinically correlate these findings with the patient. Um, does this mean, Doc, uh, was this uh, number two that you just uh, discussed, is that uh, related to the ski crash injury? No.
So you had one clinical interview with uh, Terry Sanderson, correct? Yes, I did. And that was in your clinic? Yes, it was. How did you clinically assess Terry's TBI symptoms? Well, he, basically, uh, they are mild, if, you, if that's what you're looking for. But his, basically, he has an ongoing, from his history, he has an ongoing post-concussive symptoms. Uh, does mild mean that it's insignificant? No, not necessarily. It depends on the symptoms. Uh, like I said, your brain is your entire being, so uh, someone can lose, uh, uh, for example, eyesight in one eye, but if you're a surgeon, uh, then you're done, if you know what I mean. But if you uh, engage in other activities, you could probably continue on with just monocular vision, but uh, for a surgeon, uh, you really need uh, both eyes to perform surgeries. And that would be an example. So how did you corroborate that Terry Sanderson had a TBI or traumatic brain injury? All from his concussion. A concussion defines a uh, TBI, traumatic brain injury. So uh, it's like I said before, the issue becomes whether or not the symptoms are permanent or not. And that's where his medical records, i.e. ongoing medical care by his treating physicians and the so-called before and after witnesses come into play to corroborate uh, the time course of those symptoms. Okay, next I'd like to uh, ask you about your opinions in this case. Uh, especially those involving the uh, injuries he suffered and what they mean uh, from the ski crash of February 26, 2016. So first I'd like to address the uh, concussion. Uh, what are your opinions regarding the concussion? Well, that he sustained a concussion and that came from the closed head trauma from the ski accident. Uh, what are your opinions as to the uh, uh, cause of the TBI? Uh, well, basically his, his head struck the ground and that would be the, uh, the, app, the force application that would uh, result in the closed head injury resulting in the TBI. Um, your, uh, what are your conclusions or opinions regarding the rib fractures? Well, that, once again, that came from his contact with the ground. From the ski accident, that is. Okay. Well, based upon your biomedical engineering and the physics, tell us what this can indicate are they regarding trying to the reconstruct? cause of his, uh, fall to the ground. Are we reconstructing? Well, the falling to the ground Hello, chat. resulted from his center of gravity being shifted outside of his torso. So he had to, it, it drew him to the ground. My ambition didn't break and her so leg. The question becomes what caused that shift in his center of gravity caused Thanks, him to fall to the ground. And that was since he fell to the right side, that was an Ooh. impact from or an externally applied force application. Data, I saw it. Your, oh, there it is. Side. And that's yeah, it's the lawyers it. at council table. It's the lawyers at council table. Okay. Uh, Gwyneth's kids won't be witnesses. Uh, does this indicate until that uh, Terry Sanderson was she hit testifies. from behind? Until. Well, yes, it does. I it's mean, her case in chief, which is if, not till next week. Uh, I mean, you got a witness uh, saying that he was struck from behind, but uh, suffice it to say, the force application came from behind and from the left side, causing him to go over onto his right side. And that's where that impact 
did not the resolve. The chat was like, Mom, that first impact can did you not pick me up? The fracture or a concussion. It was his contact with the ground that resulted in the injuries that we see in the medical records. So him hitting the ground is what okay, caused um, the injuries. So he could have hit her, then hit the ground, or he could have hit the ground Can first. you explain how uh, your understanding of force application... Cross will be interesting. ...show this? Well... The biggest thing is, is that when you fall to the ground um, and you have evidence of rib fractures on the lateral side of your um, torso, then obviously there was a force application directly to the rib. Because he could have hit her location. and then hit the ground, or she and hit him so and then he hit the ground. when you fall to your right side, uh, your elbow or your arm uh, gets in the way between your chest wall and the ground. And so the hard object would be you, you i.e. your and arm. Both of them are saying he hit the left. Making contact with the ribs, resulting in the rib fracture. And then... It could have been either. Very, very shortly after that, then you strike your head uh, against the ground as well. Because if he hit her, if he hit her, he could have hit her and then rolled to the it's, left uh, and hit the ground. Or she hits or, him, uh, but then wouldn't that, he just go uh, straight down? Why to the Terry left? Sanderson was uh, if he hits her, he goes to the left. By uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, not straight down. Well, I don't know who. I, I guess it was her that struck him. But yes, it does show that he was struck from behind and went forward to the right. To the right or to the left? Injuries upon impact to the ground. Because it wasn't, he didn't go straight down, but he's also wearing skis uh, and skis are dynamic. Can you walk us through the uh, engineering and physics, unless you've already explained oh, it? Oh, physics. Also, the well, snacks the, right now are lemon cream. Well, you can put numerical Lance values Carters. on this because uh, we are subjected, everyone on this planet is, is subjected to... This isn't a dumb question. There are conflicting witness pull. statements. And each witness is saying we the other witness didn't that see it. As gravity. And that is 1G. So it attracts us to the Earth. So we as humans, we maintain primarily an erect posture. And so if you shift your center of gravity where that uh, outside of your torso, you have a tendency to fall unless you're holding on to something. So you will fall to the ground. Okay. And, and so. Beck, you can I, I try. The time I'm inspired by those that have gone before me. Around for different body parts, that, you know, depending on his height, and so you can appreciate that when you fall like this, your your ribs are located around here, your head's up here. So actually, your ribs are going to hit first, and followed by your head. But it takes a certain amount of time to do that, and that's, you know, falling basically like a free fall, if you will. So it takes less than a yeah, half. Yeah, the white balance on this is not uh, is not ideal. And you can there's uh, a term we like to use in physics called kinetic energy. And when you calculate the kinetic energy over a distance, we refer to that as work done. And so you can calculate the kinetic energy that's imparted upon different body parts, knowing where those body parts are and how they struck the ground. And so in Mr. Sanderson's case, the, the history from witnesses or a witness was that there was a person on top of him that fell to the ground. Uh, along with him, that would impact the force application to his ribs, but not to his head, okay, because the person wasn't sitting on his head as he fell to the ground. They so weren't? When you do the Shock, calculation, it turns out to be about 4,000 newtons of impact force to the ribs. I'm disappointed that we're back to non-Tesla measuring units. Bracket. And that's consistent. Now with the head, that's a different calculation. 
uh, as well for obvious reasons because the mass of the head is much different than the mass of Mr. Sanderson with Ms. Paltrow on him as he's falling to the ground. So when you do those calculations, and keeping in mind he was also wearing a helmet, and so that helmet serves to absorb some of the energy transferred to the brain. So when you strike the ground, you have a kinetic energy calculation as well. And so you determine the velocity, you know the mass of the head, and you know the distance between the brain and the outer scalp, and the distance of the helmet is about two inches. So that all comes into play. Now keep in mind, if he wasn't wearing a helmet, uh, the force application to his head would be much higher. In fact, about three times higher. So the helmet did serve its purpose of absorbing some of the blow, if you will, in layman's terms. But that calculation turned out to be about 240 newtons of impact force. And that is assuming that he fell on level ground. Now, I understand that ski slopes have some type of incline. I don't know what that is in this particular case. Any incline would make the calculation more severe because he would have fallen further. And so the distance travel on a fall increases the velocity, which is proportional to the square of the velocity. The kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the velocity in these types of calculations. For all intents and purposes, fall to level ground with- Marissa, to that point about of camera. To the brain. Lawyers are not, most lawyers are not super tech savvy either. The force that was applied, a physics term, correct? So. Yes, it is a physics term. It's and not, it it's from bring it on. No, we learned uh, this from bring it on. So the force that was uh, applied, let's uh, start with the uh, ribs first. Uh, and on the right side indicate that- And are the crackers are Mr. so good Mr. Sanderson was hit from behind or the side and uh, with Ms. Paltrow landing on top of him, that shows that uh, it's much more likely than not that he was hit I, I by Ms. Paltrow. That we can hear them well, he was hit by someone from the, the side. Of this is plain. Keep in mind that that person also landed on him. So it's usually people that just fall, fall to the ground, do not suffer rib fractures. And, and the reason being is that there's not enough energy being transferred to the rib. It takes something else. And the something else would be someone falling with them. Are you telling me if someone fell on a ski slope and landed it. on their yeah, arm, it couldn't case, break their ribs at 69 years old? That the person weighed around 130 pounds. That would certainly be enough force to do that. Are you testifying? Never mind. I'm going to leave that be. I'm going to leave that be. Uh, the rib injuries. Uh, would you use the analogy that uh, they're kind of like uh, looking at a the bumper of a car that was involved in a rear-ended collision, where uh, another car rear-ended the car, and they 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 help show what the injury might be and what how it was caused. Well, the rear injury really depicts how the injury occurred, what happened. Not the head trauma. Can you the tell head us what happened? It's just a, a result of the fall. Victor, man, I'm uh, sorry. Okay. I mean, that's independent of anyone being on top of him, you know, falling to the ground. The fact that he fell to the ground and struck his head is responsible uh, for the, the head trauma. The ribs tell us how it happened because there's only really one way in this particular scenario that there could have been enough force application to fracture those ribs. Now, if there were no rib fractures, you wouldn't be able to say how this all occurred. Uh, so does this indicate who hit whom? Well, yes, if you had a choice between Mr. Sanderson hitting Ms. Paltrow or Ms. Paltrow hitting Mr. Sanderson, you would have to pick Ms. 
compound road hitting Mr. Sampson from behind and falling on top of him to account for the rip fractures. I'm interested to hear the cross examination uh, I'm sorry, on that. Did you say that again? Pretty definitive. If did I read that right? To compare two scenarios, Mr. Sanderson striking Ms. Paltrow or Ms. Paltrow striking Mr. Sanderson and falling to the ground. There's only one scenario that would account for enough force application to fracture those ribs, and that would be Ms. Paltrow striking Mr. Sanderson from behind and then falling on top of him down. Is that taking the right into side account the force of the slope? Or the, the right side of this torso. velocity because of the slope. So you did consider the possibility that that uh, Terry could have hit Miss Paltrow. Well, yes, I considered uh, a number of different scenarios. Not only that, but uh, the possibility of a rotational effect uh, both ways. Uh, Terry Sanderson. It's a very Ms. definitive Paltrow statement from an expert. It's and interesting. Rotating in such a way uh, to the ground. Uh, could that uh, account for the uh, the rib injuries and vice versa? Ms. Paltrow striking Mr. Sanderson from behind. How and did rotating, they find this expert? I'm know, so in curious. Such a way. I took those into consideration, and those were eliminated uh, for a number of reasons. But the biggest one is it takes a half a second to fall to the ground and to rotate in such a way that you strike your ribs onto the ground over your elbow would indicate that, let's say that Mr. Sanderson struck Ms. Paltrow from behind and rotated and she fell on top of them as a result of the rotational effect. Mr. Sanderson would have had to generate the initial rotational force to cause that rotation in order for him to land beneath Ms. Paltrow, okay? And then, in so doing, he would have landed on his back. Now, keep in mind that if you're going to rotate 180 degrees in less than half a second, that's basically a rotational rate of between 360 and 400 degrees per second. Now, having dealt with athletes all my life, I've dealt with swimmers or divers. Divers really have a difficult time even generating that type of rotational rate when they do their complex dives. So Mr. Sanderson uh, certainly would not be able to generate that From swimming to diving to football. And land. Tell me more about the swimming. Underneath Ms. Paltrow. Then vice versa, if Ms. Paltrow struck Mr. Sanderson from behind and rotated around, then that would have been at an even more increased rotational rate for Mr. Sanderson to be underneath Ms. Paltrow for those ribs to fracture. And then again, more likely than not, he would have landed on his back and not his side. And then the last consideration is they both had their skis on. To, to be able to do that type of rotation, you would expect skis to come off, and they did. So, oh, the type he's di the type of diving kind of he's talking about is competitive with regards to like springboard and platform diving, like, like Olympic diving, not keep in mind like that is rescue a very, diving. very short period of time between contact and striking the ground. So you're saying it it's nearly impossible that Terry Sanderson hit Miss Paltrow to cause this ski crash? It seems crash. like that's what he's saying. Well, yes. I mean, I get. I went through all of those scenarios. Unless there is some other descriptor that I am not aware of and did not take into consideration, the only possible way would have been this Paltrow strike Mr. Sanderson from behind. Sanderson's skis so were still on saying, based uh, on the evidence we've heard so far. This hit from behind is about the only way his ribs could have broken the way they did? Yes. So you're saying from a physics standpoint, Terry's injuries 
Um, could only have been caused. They're going to keep asking this. Could uh, only have been caused. Would not have occurred if he had hit Miss Paltrow. That's what he seems and, to be saying. Uh, skied between her skis, for example. To the mere fact of him just striking her, there, that's not enough in, uh, energy being transferred to the ribs. They would obviously have to fall. Pressure. They would have to and collide and then fall. Neither is obviously. Ms. Paltrow striking Terry from behind. That contact in of itself is not going to result in rib fracture. It's the actual landing on the ground that resulted in the rib fracture. But couldn't he have hit her and then they fell? Like the falling is the problem. I've got questions. So uh, the ribs and the way they were fractured are a clear sign that Terry Sanderson was hit from behind. Yes, I mean, that's what my analysis points to. And uh, like I said before, I analyzed different scenarios and took that into consideration as well. Including the They fall in the both rotation. scenarios. It's the ground yes, that's the I problem, that truly. Well. Sue the and, earth. Uh, there is Earth. There was not no enough snow. It could have happened. The ground was too hard. Any other uh, scenario, if you will, other than being struck from behind on the left side, driving your center of gravity through the right, resulting in the fall to the ground. To the right side. Okay. okay um, yes, gravity is rude. We've been going almost an hour um, or about an hour. Why don't we take a short break and uh, recontinue and continue after the break? Thank you. Thank you. Off record. The time is one ten. This is them keeping track. Record, the time is one twenty-eight. Of how much time they are taking for the depots and when they are out and on. Dr. Bain. Uh, uh, okay, so him the hitting the ground about, caused the problem. Uh, the concussion that How Terry did he suffered hit the ground? in this uh, ski crash. Um, it seems that he's saying the only way this uh, happens. As a practicing neurologist, uh, the only way this happens. One of the typical symptoms of a concussion. Paltrow hits him, and that's well, the good most testimony for that. Is headache, and then you can have they zoomed, zoomed the any break. number of uh, other symptoms. I don't know why they didn't include, just edit out the break. Uh, disorientation, confusion. Um, not interacting correctly, some irritation, uh, that kind of stuff. And now, obviously, if you have more severe uh, injuries, you can actually have like paralysis, loss of vision, these types of things. But uh, suffice it to say, the most common is a headache and followed by a number of other things that may or may not accompany uh, the headache. Yeah, uh, based on what you've read and what you've seen in your exam, did Terry have some of these symptoms? Yes, he did, and and he reported those to me, which were consistent with the medical records, and so I had no reason to uh, refute that. But I would certainly uh, defer all those findings to his treaters. Um. Could you tell the jury, do you think uh, Terry was uh, uh, malingering, magnifying, or faking any of his symptoms? Uh, I did, he didn't appear that way to me, no. Okay. Uh, returning to the concussion, um, you know, I've got a model here. and you can see that uh, can you tell the jury uh, how a concussion occurs such as the one Terry suffered in this crash well a concussion results from the application of force or a blow to the head to the brain terms. basically an externally applied force application that gets transferred to the brain you can appreciate that, uh, excuse me, for just one second. Oh, we've got a brain. Bring the brain. Bring the brain. Yes. Is there going to be a skull or just a brain? Yeah, I'm here for the doctor toys. Give me a demonstrative. I have one of these, too. <laughs> okay. You can appreciate that the brain lies brain. within 
the skull table. This is the skull. And that's the hardest bone that we have. But the brain is not hard like We're so bone. close to being back to it's hard-headed. It's like a gelatinous, if you were able to ever to hold one. It's like a jello with stuff. Are you, you saying know, it's goopy? Carrot sticks or whatever in there. It's, you know, it's, it's, goopy? it's a unique consistency, if you will. And so, and I'm talking about a live brain because as part of my residency, we did do brain surgery. So the brain is very, what we call friable, soft. And so it moves, okay, it's a fluid. And so if your head moves or your skull moves, the brain will move into the opposite direction and then have Just a tendency to Just all the brain emojis. I see the brain the emojis. Side. And that's based on Newton's first and third law as well. The first law being Brains. an object will remain at rest or in constant motion unless acted upon by an external implied force. And Thanks, the Phoenix. third law is for every force application, there's an equal and opposite force application. I... And so the brain For every action, there's an equal and opposite move. reaction. Is that the law that we're talking in about? Opposite it, direction laws of physics? Of the skull. So it's going to make contact with that, with the bony table within the skull. So it's going to compress and expand and then compress again. So the French refer to that as a coup, contra coup type of situation. So you Wait, can we're speaking actually French get now? injury from that. And so. If we you were speaking fall, Latin yesterday. Forward, we haven't ipsy dixited today, but down, the brain is going to compress downwards and then rebound backwards. So you can see that the, the front part of the brain, and you can appreciate that underneath here, you got all these complex bony structures. So we can't because the, the white the balance is making that is a little going different. To be exposed Old. to that that sudden change in direction as well. So you can have symptoms, any number of symptoms. From that, so I if like you the have frontal lobe uh, issues, you can have executive dysfunctioning, motivational issues, you can have behavioral issues, and then the subcortical or the underneath side of the brain, you can have memory issues, that kind of stuff. So, and then you can appreciate that all parts of the brain are kind of interconnected. Okay, so you can have issues from those interconnecting fibers being uh, affected as well. So that's what the external applied force application does to the skull that is transferred to the brain. Fair. I, I also yeah. have motivation issues and executive functioning dysregulation. So this, uh, these forces that uh, the brain is coup contra coup or sloshing around in the skull, that's my term. It's goopy. Did something like that happen to Terry? Well, yes. I mean, whenever you have a force application, uh, the possibility, certainly you have the coup, which is the direct hit, and then you can have rebounding as well. Uh, and you don't know uh, whether you get uh, injury from one or the other. It's generally thought that the contra coup injury tends oh, to be more severe in most rough. individuals. But that's not always the case. But, but I love that you have chickens. Suffice to say, if you have 240 newtons of impact force to the brain, that's certainly enough to cause <laughs> some dysfunction of the brain. Now, does it guarantee dysfunction? No. No. You can't. And what I'm saying here is just because you're exposed to an externally applied force to the head of 240 newtons, doesn't guarantee brain injury. You have to clinically correlate that with the patient's medical records and the patient himself. So that has to be done first before you go back and do the calculations to see if the force application was proper in he, both direction and magnitude. LH, he went right after this, he complained of rib injury almost immediately. So, uh, so I when think you say clinically those uh, facts, correlated, does that Go to that. And he that had medical documentation early. Brain uh, or well, rib injuries you, need to be treated. <laughs> it's tough. I will tell you this: you don't have any opinions if you don't have clinical correlation. You see what I'm saying? Without the medical aspect of this, you don't know. 
if someone came up to me and said, well, this person was exposed to 240 newtons of impact Jer, force against his head. That's hilarious. What's his diagnosis? Well, I couldn't tell Contra you. Not without knowing what the symptoms are, and if, in the case if, the, if that patient has medical Sherlock, records. Sure, Mom, that happened a lot to this morning. His medical records to see how his symptoms uh, progressed over time and how they or they did not respond to different treatment paradigms that were offered to the patient. So clinical correlation is absolutely critical in assessing these types of situations. And uh, there was clinical correlation that you observed or saw or determined yourself? Well, yes, I looked at the medical records and upon questioning, it seemed like it was the next Sanderson year in my office on April 28, 2021. Lucinda, I don't know if Runkle knew everything that was on the goop so page. Consistent with the medical I'll go record. look. So I it's had a lot no of adult toys to with goop. Either him or the medical records. Would you say his uh, uh, head injury or concussive injury is as permanent at this point? Well, that, that has always been the issue here, you know, whether or not the concussion is permanent or temporary. The fact that his symptoms have lasted from a neurological sense greater than 18 months, we regard that as being permanent. And you can see that as of six years after the event when I saw him, he still had these symptoms. So his symptoms uh, have been indicative of a permanent condition. A permanent brain injury? Uh, yes, I mean, he has a mild TBI or a permanent concussive disorder. Okay, you mentioned uh, some things involved with executive function and other things, and he's exhibited all of those problems too. Yeah, I mean, he, he does. Now, to what extent, I can't tell you, I wasn't, going to uh, provide any opinions with regards to his level of functioning as it relates to this mild uh, TBI, but he does have the mild TBI, but uh, the extent to which I'm not going to comment on because I'm not one of his treating physicians, nor and I think that's am fair. I one of his before and after witnesses. In this collision, uh, how, how would you explain that uh, Ms. Paltrow has uh, fewer symptoms of problems, if, if at all, from this uh, ski And that's crash? a very good question. Well, first of all, I haven't reviewed any medical records for Ms. Paltrow, so I do not. That's very fair, uh, staying within his scope. on that. He's like, nope, than nope, nope, nope. By falling on top of him, he, he provides a cushioning effect against her in the ground. So from a force application, an externally applied force application standpoint, less force was applied to her than to him. So is another way of saying uh, she provide, or Terry Sanderson provided a cushion, uh, he took the force for her fall? I think yeah, that's what he just said. It, in essence, I mean, basically he was like a cushion, if you will. And uh, earlier we discussed before and after witnesses being clinically important for a diagnosis of concussion and TBI that's lasted longer than 18 months. Uh, uh, how would you uh, describe these before and after witnesses such as his daughters or his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend? Well, they certainly describe a change in his overall makeup. Uh, from before and after this event. Now, how it affects him directly, uh, once again, I'm gonna to defer to others for that, but certainly there is uh, before and after witness testimony reflecting that. And those before and after witnesses are important to determine the uh, nature and extent of his injuries? In the yes, I mean, uh, absolutely. I mean, you're the, uh, like I said before, whenever you have this type of situation or this type of patient that presents to you, often it is the witness account that is important.
let's talk about Terry's pre-existing uh, medical let's... condition. Uh, uh, it's right. been brought up uh, in that uh, one exhibit uh, with the x-rays or radiology uh, that were, was reported shortly after the crash within a few days that he had uh, NPA and enlarged ventricles. Uh, you, you recall that. Oh, correct? gosh, we're back to the yes, enlarged NPH. ventricles. Or, sorry, MPH. I wrote it wrong. Not that's Neil Patrick Harris. I know, chat. That's what I want it to be, too. I um, want it to be NPH. Uh, what is the, the <laughs> significance of uh, NPH? Uh, We've got like five more minutes. Uh, being a condition chat, he just, had prior to the y'all, crash. Y'all are the champions. And uh, how it affects we're your almost, opinions we're today. We're almost clear. If you could explain that to the jury. And then let's be done. Normal with the pressure day. hydrocephalus is We've a done enough work that this is day. clinically by a triad. Dementia, ataxia, which means loss of balance, and incontinence. And it, it develops slowly over time. And we see this uh, from a radiological standpoint as enlarged ventricles on either the CT scan, but more appropriately, the MRI. And so when you see this in that clinical setting, then you want to do one of two things, or preferably both. You do a spinal tap to see if you have increased intracranial pressure on the spinal tap, and we have manometers that we attach to the needle going into the, uh, into the back to measure that pressure in millimeters of water. And so I chat as bay. If it is Just keep it going. elevated, i.e. greater than 200 millimeters of water, then Oh, and we're almost at the treatment of 710,000 do a burr hole in the head and stick a catheter into the lateral ventricle ventricle and then trace a drain all the way down through the neck into his stomach if you will, abdomen, to drain off excess spinal fluid, i.e. reducing the Kelly. pressure. Kelly, plaintiff was supposed and to testify today and testimony ran long. Which I have done so. a number of times in the past. And so no. that is the treatment for it. But you don't want to do that unless I you I think have, they went longer with poly than they anticipated. You don't do it based on just the radiological findings. You want to have the clinical, any intracranial image has to be clinically correlated to the patient. So if you don't have those symptoms, then you, you don't want to be putting holes in people's heads without having symptoms. Thanks. So in this particular case, he did not have the diagnosis of normal pressure hydrocephalus before this fall, even though he had hmm. a suggestion of that in the differential from a radiological standpoint. So. That's where the clinical correlation comes into play. So he did not have the three clinical symptoms of NPH, is that correct? That's correct. I mean, these are, I mean, dementia, ataxia, and incontinence are pretty noteworthy symptoms to have. And these people tend to well, present as they're being, as they develop over time. So they're saying uh, not a rapid they tend to determination. Medical attention rather quickly, if you know what I mean. Okay. So the um, ski crash injuries he suffered, uh, 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 they're not attributable to his uh, findings uh, radiologically of NPH. Okay. Is that correct? That's correct. No, they're not. Uh, I'd like to uh, Now's a good time uh, to pause. turn you to the defense experts. Now's um, a good time to pause. You've read uh, some or all I have of, cat glitter uh, on my I think most of the reports of the defense experts. Uh, is that correct? Can we pause? That's correct. Darn it. Uh, some of them were quite brief. Isn't that correct? I see the chat saying hi to well, boss attorney Bree. Yes, I didn't uh, see you come in, but in hi. Fact, I do like gravity, but uh, yes, I got this point. <laughs> Big fan of okay, gravity. Um, Big fan of gravity. And uh, <laughs> you've reviewed the. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Lawrence. Sorry, Lawrence. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm trying to figure out a, a good time to, to interrupt here. But uh, I, I just want to register an objection uh, to any opinions that Dr. Bain could have 
provided Thanks, in his deposition. James. If not, um, then you can proceed. Okay. Well, uh, uh, since uh, your deposition, you've reviewed the uh, defendant's disclosure of Irving share. Is that correct? Well, yeah. Happy just birthday. The, the disclosure. I haven't reviewed any. That's James. Report or anything from him. Okay. Um, Somebody was defying gravity. It's our understanding I'm that a big he's fan a of gravity. Uh, biomechanical expert. Is your that Honor, your understanding? Your Honor, we've so done a lot of good work this me. day. Sounds like we're getting into a new area. Yay! It'll be a good time to take a recess until tomorrow at 9 a.m. So thank you. Remember uh, to please keep the court's admonition not to do any of your own research, not to discuss the case with anyone. Thanks, Your Avoid, Honor. Avoid uh, seeing, reading, or listening oh, to any news Honor. reports about the case. Have a nice evening. You're the real hero. I saw a question scroll by and it went fast as everybody started celebrating that we were done this day. We're not done yet. We got to see what the attorneys say because that's where the spice lives. But um, I saw a question about why are we not privy to the sidebars? There's no microphones up there for the um, for us to hear that the jury can't hear. So that's why they're not excusing the jury in and out to put things on the record. They should be putting some oh, things on the record today. Oh, look at that. Paltrow did not put a binder over her face today. I wanted to ask. Uh, Interesting. Polly Gresham, questions about her sister, Jenny Sanderson. They're making a record of what happened <coughs> earlier. What I would have elicited had I been allowed is that Jenny has a schizophrenic, uh, uh, I think it's called typal, T-Y-P-A-L diagnosis and has a lot of psychological problems from that. Now, uh, I'm not posing her as an expert, but as a... Uh, the audience should sit uh, at uh, this a point. A lay person who knows her very well and knows the kind of problems that she has. I have a concern with this being nationally publicized uh, without the permission of this patient with a pretty explosive statement that I've never seen one iota of evidence. I don't think, and, oh boy. and specifically, Mr. Sykes does not represent Jenny, and unless he has written permission to make these disclosures to a, an even international audience, I, I'm pretty troubled by it. He's making his record for court, though, counsel. I, so I think it's a big violation of this woman's privacy. I, I agree. If we're going to make a statement, I mean, if you want to make a record, I think we should make a record, but we should do it in camera. Well, okay, stupid. All right. So if we could, if we could, please go ahead and clear the courtroom. We'll take five minutes so that All right. the press gets turned off. We clear the We're courtroom, done and then you day. can make your offer of proof. Yeah, and and uh, secondly, I can make this publicly. Uh, we never subpoenaed yeah, too late. Um, Holly Gresham officially. We gave her a subpoena so she could show it to her employer if she needed to. Uh, but we expected that she would come. If she didn't come, we were without, you know. Uh, we had a deposition. And so uh, her, she was to appear today, <coughs> excuse me, and um, uh, when she finished, you ordered her to come back next week. Now, I think that's improper. She has a lot of other things going on in her life. Uh, her job, et cetera, and I don't think she should have to well, stay she's, around. She's now, been ordered back now. You objected. If you disagree and you have the black robe, and I do not. You objected. Okay. You could have let counsel uh, get into it, then, but you didn't. Uh, we so ought this to have is what an happens. Agreement that she can appear via Zoom. But I don't think she has an obligation under the facts. She does I've now. Given you she's been ordered. To uh, uh, be forced to return here next week. She's been ordered. Earlier, I mean, I asked her if she nope, she's would have been any problem remaining under the subpoena, and she didn't voice that at that time. I realized I put her on the spot, and and it, so if she and you're not representing her, she voiced it to me. <laughs> and you're not representing her. No. And so if she if she would like to be released from the subpoena or have its terms changed in some way, she can certainly request that. Well, yeah. it's uh, a bit all late to make a decision. Yeah. It's a bit late for that. Okay. Sure. Let's have her come in. Oh, she's outside. I appreciate that Paltrow's attorney did say this should be in camera. The the plaintiff's attorney should have. And then I guess if there's anything else we should do during before we close the hearing, well, uh, just uh, should have said what he was getting into on the record. Paper that has 
it says what uh, Mr. I think we should wait till the I agree with you, James. Is true. James, about, I agree with uh, you. James said, I think we ought to wait till we're in camera. We're not, let's cover that. Wait in the, in till you're in camera. I think, I think, I think the, no. the audience ought to know, like, in, uh, it may not be true. In uh, Terry Sanderson's deposition, he indicated so, as such. That so there is an iota. There is an iota. Never uttered. Hey, yeah, there is an iota of indication of this in Terry Sanderson's Because lawyers can't just spew shit out of their two days ago it does not anal. say that word well e anywhere. even if it even if it did that too would be improper to introduce into this proceeding in the public way right what i'm saying is that the statement of counsel that there's not an iota of this there is not then counsel should have said order. that there this is what they were going to get into and then it shouldn't be and then it should be in camera not on okay. camera so polly why don't you come on up and take the and stand now they've we're got just to trying talk to, to polly. straighten out uh i understand that Ooh. you may have some commitments no, this right now like we're we're dealing with town. the subpoena and the fact that she is going to why be requested to come back to yeah so i said i i work with 4-h and so one of the things i'm committed to is um having programming when kids are out of school because typically that's a time when they get in trouble so um, that being said, in our community, it's spring break. And so I have a science camp all next week. And it's our first time in our new youth center. So it's kind of, I mean, it's a small town, but a big deal for me. So I, I understand that you need more information. I, I don't know if remote is a possibility. Um, there could be kids in the background. <laughs> no, I could probably have staff cover me if that was something that would work i um your honor we'll, we'll release her from the subpoena okay oh entirely. well that resolves it entirely okay. well that resolves it then so you're you're and the plaintiffs do as well yes okay so you're released from the subpoena you have no legal obligation thank you thank you yeah thanks for your service here okay so um, she can come She's going to leave tomorrow afternoon or evening, but she can come into court tomorrow and watch, right? She, yeah. My flight's in the morning, so. All right. She's All right. now been released. To release her for hardship and have her sit in the courtroom. But then I wouldn't release her for hardship. She just said she's leaving. Oh, fucking hell, counsel. If, if, she's re if you're released from your subpoena, that means a couple of things. She's that released. That means, first of all, uh, according to the decorum order that the court has issued, the press might want to ask you some questions. And you can talk to them or you can decide not to talk to them. That's your choice. And, and the bailiffs are here to help make sure that they respect that, okay. your choice. Would you prefer that you not talk? It's, can well, we get a, I, I guess I sort of assumed you can't that she advise wouldn't be talking her. to the press or I wouldn't. Again, I'm, I'm, I think we're doing a kind gesture to release her from the subpoena, but I don't want it to come back and slap me. So. Uh, can we agree that she's not going to talk to the press? No, until you can't. After she's released. Trial? And I mean, is there a chance you may want to call her by Zoom? He's no, going to say I'm yes now. I'm agreeing to do that. I just don't want to be punished for having doing that kind. And why of would act. that be a punishment? Yes, that she counsel. goes and talks to the press yeah. negatively about my client. I mean, I'm just saying. Or about why you? Why would that be a negative? The order's out there. Yes. You're aware of its terms, and she's now being released. Oh, it's Therefore, all about him, isn't it? From that the press is released. I don't. I want to be fair to the press as well. He doesn't want it to bite him in They're, the ass. Can we ask the witness whether she intends to talk to the no, press right now? No, you can't. Now? I think you could probably do that um, after we. Uh, quit she doesn't want to talk to you. So, and let me. I was. I was just interrupted. And She's shaking her head no, Your Honor. But. Ew. Well, go ahead. I apologize. You interrupted the court. Just to let you know that both sides have agreed not to talk to the press until after the case is over. Okay. I have a private enough person and people are vulnerable enough that this is done video, so I so have the no. press, the press is all listening now. She's expressing her interest not to be interviewed, so I expect them to respect that. Sure. And then the second, uh, I guess the second consequence of you being released from your subpoena is that you're welcome to sit in on any of the proceeding from here on out. So. I don't anticipate that. And She's like, I'm, things to do. please let me go it. home. It's being broadcast in your area. Okay. At the Emily D. Baker on YouTube, you're welcome to come watch it with us. That's okay. Sure. The number sure. one place to watch um, live trials. So if you could just wait a few more minutes. According to YouTube, trending. Okay. 
Jesus Christ. Is there anything else public that we need it's to do It's not today? done. So. Oh, God. That's a yes. We can't change the deal. I mean, you uh, release, uh, I release, and suddenly she's giving more testimony. So by giving more testimony, I may not release. What is Understood. happening? So let, let's not whack me with my kindness here. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Is there anything <laughs> other than this subject that we can address while the proceeding is public that we need to address? <laughs> She oh. was almost free. Well, just uh, <laughs> that, that your, your, your honor said if the diagnosis comes out at trial, it could be a mistrial. So I just wanted to put that on the record. Okay. I did say I did say something along those lines, and it's not going to be put out in front of the jury. So we'll move we'll move forward from there. So we'll take a five minute recess while the courtroom gets cleared, and then we'll continue with the offer of proof. Thank you. Thank you. And the court's going in camera for the rest of the day. Polly has been released from the subpoena. Mother of dragons, what has happened today? Okay. This attorney does not want to be whacked. He doesn't want to be whacked with anything. Whack, whack, whack. All right. I'm going to leave the court feed up for a minute. And then I have to get going because we have a members. Oh, oh, the cameras have been cut. Yeah, that's the end of that. We have a a Patreon exclusive stream, which was a, a reward. Um, it was to one of our goals. So that is happening at 7 p.m. So I need to take a minute to go get some food. But first, I'm going to do a summary of today or this afternoon. Uh, and then I will do a quick lightning round of questions. Here's what you need to know. If you are enjoying live trial coverage, which law nerds, you always seem to very much enjoy live trial coverage because you have made this the top destination to watch live trial coverage. And I appreciate you. We are the top live stream on live trending and have been while we have been streaming every time we have been streaming, which is not lost on me. That's incredible. With that, um, if you want to stay in the loop with when I am streaming, because our text crew does not facilitate our international audience, lawnerdalert.com is the place to stay in the loop reliably. I also post it on social. I also post in our member spaces. I also post here on YouTube. I will put up the streams when I have a moment to do so, so you can hit notify me. I'm not sure what time I will be going live tomorrow. We have another hour and 20 minutes of this video deposition. And so I will be live after that because I have some obligations in the morning. And if I can meet those obligations and not have to reschedule them, that is my preferred option. And then we are going to get into the daughter, Shay. It looks like the husband of the daughter, Mark. Then Terry Sanderson, the plaintiff. And that's probably it tomorrow, which means Gwyneth will be Monday. That timing is good for me, boo. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So what time exactly I'll be streaming tomorrow will be after 11 a.m. Central, probably closer to noon Central. But if we get right to the court's lunch break, then it will be in the afternoon. So noon Central will be 11 a.m. there. So we won't necessarily get to the court's lunch break. And I think that that is, is a good way to handle it. I will keep you posted at Law Nerd Alert first. So if you haven't signed up for that, do. If you want to join me and Dr. B tonight, Law Nerds Unite will get you there. Let us do a quick summary. Woo, today's been a lot. Uh, that last witness gave me a headache, and I think it was the background and the contrast on the video. I'm just, my eyes are still like, wah. The end of day three with some snappy lawyerness, some inappropriate things put on the record that I'm not going to repeat. People who don't seem to redact medical records and an expert witness via video deposition after we finished the cross-examination of the plaintiff's daughter, Polly. Polly, the daughter, talked quite a lot about the um, sister that is estranged from the family and that circumstance. And it was interesting watching the testimony kind of shift as Polly was like, this is her truth, this is my truth. People perceive the world differently. So it's clear that her sister, who is six years younger, had a much different relationship with her dad. Polly also testified that her father was healthy and she didn't notice him aging. And then plaintiff's counsel 
defense counsel went uh paltrow's counsel went through quite lengths quite a lot of lengths to talk about all of his different health things that are not just indicative of aging but other general health that is not peak health i would i would say so went through at length all of those different things and she's like i just wasn't aware of that she has a very um I don't know, maybe rose colored or rose tinted view of her father before the accident. The accident did happen seven years ago. I just wonder how much her memory of her father has shifted in the difficulty of the seven years since the accident. Where I stand with this trial right now, I still don't know the mechanism of this of this crash. I still don't know who hit who and I have not decided that in any way. There's a lot more testimony to hear and it's still unclear to me. The medical testimony is pretty clear to me that this individual did have a change in their brain functioning and cognition after this accident that changed his life. Whether Gwyneth Paltrow is at fault for that, I don't know. Whether that will shift as we get into other experts, possibly. But for now, I'm like, no, that's, it seems that everyone is on the same page about this change. So we'll be, in, I will be interested to see how my perception of that injury um, changes throughout the next experts we get into and even the cross-examination of this expert. The last expert called of the day, um, which in his Max Headroom talking head, green sheet, Voldemort, Stanley Tucci-ness, was saying that the only way he can conceive of the rib injury with the head injury, well, the rib injury being the most important to him, is if Paltrow hit Sanderson from behind and then they fell and then Sanderson struck the ground. That is his his perception based on physics and all of the other all of the rest of the math that he talked about the way that this crash happened so we now have an expert saying the only way these injuries happen is if the crash happened in this fashion where paltrow hits him and then they hit the ground versus him hitting paltrow and then hitting the ground and he also accounted for some that she has less injury even though he said i didn't evaluate her injury but somebody could have less injury when the party that they hit is a buffer between them and the ground so i thought that was interesting testimony today and um and with that and with that we're going to do a few quick questions and then wrap for the day well wrap for not very long because then we have a a live stream at seven so in just you know 40 minutes from now quick that's not questions, Emily. Wendy asked, why so many specialists? It's obvious he has post-accident issues. Shouldn't they be concentrating on proving Paltrow's at fault? It is still in controversy that all of these are post accident issues the defense attorney is arguing that these are not post accident issues that these issues started um started before the accident so it is it is it is not uncontroverted it there is still in fact controversy over the uh over the accident so that is that is why because it's not uncontroverted that's why so many experts um, fall face first with skis on. That's what the eyewitness, and I say eyewitness because that's in controversy too, but the eyewitness for the plaintiff said he was like spread eagle face first. That's not what the injuries show. All the injuries show he canted and landed on his side. That's how you get the broken ribs, but that's not the memory of the first witness to testify, which was a, you know, legs out, face down, and then said that he was face down like that for minutes unconscious like that for like minutes and minutes and minutes ever notice how nothing is an accident anymore everything is a crash and usually someone is always at fault i well in this trial it's definitely a crash because they are trying to prove somebody's at fault tiffany said he sounds like he sounds exactly like my paw nerds vet it's okay mickey and casey your doc isn't here <laughs> that's funny um bella said okay here's the bigger thing has anyone anyone seen her skiing negligently this day or about the time of the incident. We have not seen any testimony of that, and I'm sure we will hear from the ski instructors. The interesting thing, Bella, is that there were four private ski instructors with this party. So if there was skiing negligently and the ski instructors didn't do anything, wouldn't that still be a problem for Deer Valley in some way? Deer Valley's been removed from this lawsuit. So uh, 
and wouldn't the ski instructors be called as witnesses by by the defendant but the, or by the plaintiff? But the plaintiff's going to argue that the ski instructors are protecting themselves um, because he just showed the model brain, the one band yesterday. Can they now use it in the court? I don't think they can use it in the court, even though he did use it in his testimony. He was using it in a general way. I don't think they can bring it into court or give it to the jury to mess with. But I think it's fair that this witness could use it in his testimony. It made sense. If he was there live, he probably could use it. Lynn said, I haven't thought of Mr. Potato Head for years. <laughs> um, Arthur said he could have been behind her and he went um, behind her, went down, taking her out, legs causing her to fall backward on top of him. But then if they're falling backwards up the hill, I don't know if he would have landed on his side the same way. So um, have they determined if the GoPro footage exists? The attorneys indicated an opening that it does not. We'll see. I'm really disappointed they didn't follow up. They'll follow up with the other daughter because it was the other daughter, Shay, that's testifying tomorrow who had the email about the GoPro footage. So I found that very interesting too. It'll be it'll be interesting to see. Are y'all tasting the new whiskey tonight? I am. I don't know if Dr. B will be, but I am tasting the new whiskey tonight. So we bought a bottle, a, a beautiful bottle of Whistle Pig, um, 15 years. So I am very excited to taste that tonight. It's and then I'm gonna go to bed because I was up at 3 30. I did go back to sleep, but I was up at no three. I was up at three. Um, I was up at three. I did TV in the UK. I went to back to sleep, got back up, did this. It's been a lot of like on and off with makeup and up and down. I am tired. Um, ML, I thank you for the clarification on shunts. I don't remember what testimony that was to. Um, MCP in Atlanta. I'm sending out a demand package and logged into YouTube to listen to music. Saw you were live. You are a trooper. Um, congratulations with the demand package. Cheers to that. And yes, I've been live all day. We got invested today. Tomorrow, tomorrow we will be live a little bit later, but it has been a long day today. I look forward to seeing all of you this evening with an AMA. I will be posting that there. So it will be in your um, Patreon spaces. And for the rest of you, I will see you tomorrow. I know not everyone can be a member. I completely understand. And I definitely try to balance keeping most of my content um, most of my content available everywhere and making sure that the members still get the perks uh, that we promise. And this was a, a patron goal. So that will be up shortly because I'm going to go put it there now. I haven't populated it yet. So check your member spaces in just a few minutes. You'll also get notifications in the app if your app notifications are on. And with that, if you want to stay in the loop for tomorrow, last chance, lawnerdalert.com. Don't forget to do the youtube -y things. I appreciate you. I'm going to go rest my voice for a little bit, and I will see you tomorrow. We're still working on getting our own court streams, but this one has been pretty nice. The feeds have been pretty easy to access, and they've been pretty pretty good. So I'll let you know what time I'm streaming tomorrow as soon as I know what time I'm streaming tomorrow. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. You can find all the Law Nerd goodies at lawnerdshop.com. Connect with me on social media at The Emily D. Baker. And don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show and the new podcast, Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the quick bits. <laughs>